Good afternoon, Consolanians. It is nice to see my fellow college students, our beloved teams, professors, administrators, and other faculty members joining our program today, which is College Orientation and the Orientation for Old and New Students. So first, I would like to introduce myself. I am Kiana Soto, fourth year AB Communication Arts student, and I am your host for today. I am very delighted to be with you all throughout our orientation this afternoon. So before anything else, begin our program. Let, let's ask guidance and let us feel the presence of God. Let us give respect as we sing our national anthem. Hello, good afternoon, Consulanians. So this is College Orientation and the Orientation for Old and New Students. So first, what is orientation? Ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng orientation? So, orientation is held in a university before the start of an academic year. Basically, it is to orient and welcome the students. So the purpose of our, our orientation today is to demonstrate to the students the different services that our university, the Consolation University Philippines, offers and implement. And to formally start our program, I would like to introduce to you the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Tivina Ann M. Eusebio, to give her welcome remarks. Let us all give her a virtual all round of applause. Thank you, our dear MC. To our beloved university president, Dr. Sister Edita Ezerna OSA, PhD. To the LCUP religious community. To the uh, vice presidents of the different departments. To the hardworking deans, directors, and other administrators of the different colleges and units. Our dynamic and ever dependable faculty members and non teaching staff the organizing committee of this afternoon's undertaking and our dear students a blessed and blissful friday afternoon it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to la consolation university philippines 
I am delighted to see you all virtually, our old students, together with our freshmen and transferees. This afternoon is devoted for the college student orientation and reorientation program. So one key element of student orientation is for you, our dear students, to familiarize yourselves and make you aware of the university's vision, mission, goals, objectives, and core values, as well as its academic policies, services, and programs. My dear students, when you intently listen, and understand all that will be presented by our resource speakers this afternoon. Definitely, you will always be in the right directions or track, and you will successfully fulfill your target outcome of pursuing your career in this institution. As we begin this new academic year, 2022-2023, with an even stronger sense of purpose and unity, ready to face the challenges and opportunities that we may encounter in the light of the ongoing pandemic. And we promise you that together we will all have to remain understanding and flexible. So we will also be working hard and hand in hand in re realizing to reach one of our important universities quality policy, which states that quality learning does not just occur, LCUP makes it happen. I hope and I pray that you, our dearest students, will become one with your LCUP family in its quest for greater heights, specifically in your chosen program. Soar high, and may Our Lady of Consolation and our Father St. Augustine guide you in your academic journey. Be happy and be counted to the growing family of the La Consolation University of Philippines, your second home. Here, you will experience the true essence of Alagang LCUP. Have a productive and fruitful school year ahead. Good afternoon and God bless us all. Thank you po, Dr. Eusebio, for that wonderful welcome message to our students. And now, to give us an inspiring message that I am sure that the students need this school year, let us all welcome our beloved University President, Sister Editha S. Zerna USA. Let's give her a virtual round of applause. Administrators, faculty, personnel, our beloved parents and students, a grace-filled morning. It is indeed a joy to be with you in this virtual orientation activity. In spite of the global health crisis which affected the lives of people around the world, this day is considered as a blessing for all of us. The holding of this orientation activity signifies that we are ready for the now normal. The COVID-19 crisis is still here, affecting how we live our lives, how we will attend school and classes. But we are hopeful that things will get better. Remember that nothing is permanent. All this shall pass, and by the grace of God, we will overcome the hardships and challenges ahead of us. I would like to thank the parents for entrusting your sons and daughters to La Consolacion University, Philippines. The impact of the parents' presence in the children's lives especially in the milestones of their lives, is essential. Our partnership is a shared responsibility, a collaborative relationship that has a common goal, to ensure that they become successful in their chosen profession, to achieve 
what they are capable of achieving. Dear students, your coming to the university is a milestone in itself because the quality of your preparations for your future as professionals will be molded here. Together with your administrators, deans, and professors, we will journey with you for the realization of your dreams. We will be one in making your student life lighter and meaningful. Of course, in reality, nothing is easy. There will be varied obstacles along the way, but having God with us always, nothing is impossible. Everything that you sincerely desire will be given unto you. As we begin the new academic year, let us be inspired by the thought that God is with us throughout our journey. Be assured that you are in good hands. The university administration has thoroughly prepared the facilities, reconfigured academic strategies, planned the appropriate teaching and learning modalities, trained teachers and personnel to ensure your maximum learning. We assure you that the institution is doing its best to give the best and the students emerging in all disciplines to be the best. I pray that God will constantly protect and bless you and your families. Keep safe always. I wish you a fruitful academic year. Thank you very much and may our patron saint Augustine and patroness Our Lady of Consolation guide and watch us always. God bless and we care for all of you. Thank you so much for Sister Edita S. Zerna. It is indeed inspirational and influential. And I am sure that the students who are listening with us today are moved by that message. So a short story when I was a first year student, it is very hard for me to communicate with different administrators and professors. Since face-to-face -face pa noon, nahihirapan ako na kabisaduhin ang iba't ibang pangalan at mga mukha ng ating mga professors. And hindi ko alam kung nakakasulubong ko ay di na pala ng ibang college departments. Kasi kapag nag-aaral ka, hindi naman kailangan o hindi lang dapat ang mga pangalan ng kaklase natin ang alam natin. Mahalaga na kilala natin kung sino yung mga importanteng taong bumubuo sa ating university. So to formally present to you the Constellation University Philippines Administrators, Deans and Religious Community, I would like to introduce to you the Director of Human Resources Development, Ms. Ruth R. Malabiga. Good afternoon po. Thank you very much, Kine. Okay. So, for this afternoon, to present to you the LCUP Administrators for Academic Year 2022-2023. To start with, of course, for the top management, we have Sister Edita Esser, now as a PhD, our University President. Our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Divina and M. Eusebio. Our Vice President for Graduate Studies, Dr. Enrico F. Rosales. Our Vice President for Research, Publications, and Linkages, Dr. Mark Ray C. Santos. Our Vice President for Religious Formation and Extension, Sister Mary Sheba O. Principe OSA. Vice President for Finance and Administrative Services, Ma Marisa DJ Ventura. Our academic heads for this school year, we have the Dean of the College of Arts, Sciences and Education, Dr. Olivia P. Almario. Our Dean for the College of Information, Technology and Engineering, Dr. Joseph D. Espino. Our Dean for the College of International Tourism and Hospitality Management, Professor Fe Corazon C. Villanueva. Our Dean 
uh, for the College of Business Entrepreneurship and Accountancy, Dr. Maria Corazon B. Segismundo. Our Dean for the College of Medicine, Dr. Maria Cristina Izulueta. Our Dean for the College of Allied Medical Professions, Dr. Jocelyn B. Ipona. Our Principal for Basic Education Department, Sister Gemma P. Valenzuela OSA. Our Director for Alternative Education Program, Professor Maria Elizabeth B. Bivar. Our Department Heads, yours truly, the Director for Human Resource and Development. The Director for Quality Assurance and Accreditation, Alejandro P. Vistan. The Director for Integral Evangelization Program, Mr. Jose Paulo V. Espinosa. The Director for Extension Program, Professor Rudy Angelo S. R. Juan. The Director for Student Affairs and Services, Dr. Rosalyn S. Galvez. The Director for Marketing and Promotions Office and at the same time the Crisis Manager of the University, Professor Ezequiel D. Rodriguez. The Director for Library and Information Center, Dr. Maria Mercedes M. Haz. The Director for Administrative Services and at the same time Coordinator for Security Services and Food Services, Sister Helen Grace Dolino OSA. The Director for Management Information System, Professor Florante R. Reyes. Our University Registrar, Dr. Maria Lourdes D. Cervantes. For the Basic Education Department, the Assistant Principal for Grade 12 and at the same time the Director for Institutional Science Laboratory, Professor Bergilio N. Bantige. The Assistant Principal for Grade 11 and at the same time Institutional Sports Officer, Professor Rorimar L. Maliari. Our Assistant Principal to, for K-10 Program, Coordinator also for Early Childhood Education, Professor Maria Kathleen A. C. Rodriguez. The subject area coordinator for TLE TVL Home Economics and MAFE, we have Ms. Diana Carlene M. Felix. The subject area coordinator for English, Ms. Aliana Concepcion C. Gonzalez. The subject area coordinator for science, Ms. Mona Lisa A. Suba. Subject area coordinator for mathematics, engineer Felix F. Pasqua Jr. The subject area coordinator for Philippine and Social Science, we have Professor Maria Jesus Acaso Caparas. The subject area coordinator for religion, we have Ma'am Mylene J. Ebrada. Our subject area coordinator for computer and robotics, Mr. Wilfred B. Sarmiento. The LCUP Religious Community Sisters for this academic year. Of course, we have Sister Edita S. Serena OSA. Cheba OSA, uh, O Principe OSA, Sister Gemma P. Valenzuela OSA, Sister Helen Grace Dolini OSA, Sister Petronila Egalin OSA, Sister Marina Fabiliar OSA, Sister Hisako Okuda OSA, and lastly, we have Sister Bernadette Taxagon OSA. There you have it, dear parents and students for the college department. Um, here are the list of the LCUP administrators and religious sisters uh, religious community for this academic year 2022-2023 thank you and thank you for miss malabiga for introducing to us the people behind our university and our university will not be complete without them so on the other hand we all know that each university has their own set of principles and mission that will surely mold the students to achieve their desired goals. These are the things that the students should embed in their minds and in their hearts. So to present to you our university vision, mission, and goals, let us all welcome the Vice President for Spiritual Formation and Extension, Sister Mary Sheba Principe OST. Good afternoon, po. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pa. So, a blessed afternoon to the college department, especially to our dear parents, guardians, and students who are with us today virtually. 
welcome to La Consolation University, Philippines. So allow me to present to you the La Consolation University, Philippines vision, mission, and its core values. Our vision states that, moved by the spirit of the recent Christ, the Consolation University Philippines envisions itself to become a catalyst for the holistic transformational development of Catholic Augustinian Marian graduates rooted in gospel values. So our university, La Consolacion University Philippines, is under the patronage of our great father, St. Augustine of Hippo, and we have a special devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Consolation. Our school actually named after Our Lady of Consolation. Okay. Uh, this coming September 4 is the Feast of Our Lady of Consolation, but here at the university, we celebrated it today. So the university envisions to produce graduates who are holistically developed, not just academically competent, intellectually knowledgeable, but a student who has a heart, especially for the marginalized sector of our society, and a student who embodies the spirituality of our great father, St. Augustine, and of course, of Our Lady of Consolation. So we wanted our students to, to grow more in LCUP so that you will be transformed into a better person, a better citizen of our country, and also so that you will uh, bring transformation to our society, especially to our respective homes, to our community, to the different businesses, uh, organizations, institutions, and the larger community, to the church, and to wherever you may go someday. To our mission to achieve the above vision, LCUP commits itself to generate and make available to its Augustinian Marian students programs and services that will make them. First, to exhibit academic and technical competence in their respective areas of discipline in the local and international environment. The university has high hopes and her desire to offer the best that she has in order to develop individuals with excellent teaching and learning uh, experiences with us. That is why we cultivate the culture of excellence so that our students will go beyond from what is expected from them. We give our students uh, professional development goals both in local and international, to help them understand that it takes a variety of skills or a diversity of skills to be successful in any situation. And that there are always new skills to be learned and new situation in which to apply their pre-existing skills. Second is to demonstrate their knowledge, critical thinking, and creativity by exploring the various avenues of learning and searching for truth. So here in LCUP, we provide the 21st century learning environment where traditional and digital arrangements and the different platforms are blended. So now we offer face-to-face, -face, but also we have also online platform teaching strategies, learning modalities, services, and activities in the university. Because we believe that an effective learning 
environment is not limited to time or space, but it encompasses a variety of provisions and arrangements that take into consideration the ways in which we learn best. You know, as well as uh, we are considering the unique learning needs of our students that is to be addressed. Third is manifest their willingness to serve, especially the marginalized sector of our society. So dear parents, guardians, and students, here in LCUP, we engage uh, our students together with their families, our alumni, and mission partners toward a world of sustainable development by assisting and uplifting the lives of our community partners through our community extension services. So the university extend its service no, to our uh, partners, community partners around here in Bulacan. So we have an extension community service uh, in the university that helps you to, to become more socially responsible through uh, having charism journey, exposure, immersion to the poor people's lives, you know, to their realities. And we also uh, help you to have a concrete uh, way of expressing your compassion and showing your corporal works of mercy to the needy and the least privilege of our society. And also an LCUP, one with our Pope, Pope Francis, we promote the advocacy of the integrity of creation. Okay, next is the productivity in various areas of learning as responsible citizens of the society. So we believe that search for knowledge is an ingredient you know, in the holistic development of a human spirit. So for this reason, we nurture the value of pursuit of knowledge and wisdom to our students to make them become responsible citizens of our country through producing world-class scientific research, of course, to help our society. Next is, live the gospel values in the varied aspects of their personal and professional lives. So in fidelity to our mission, forming our students and becoming uh, academically and technically competent, we also commit ourselves in molding our graduates to become competent professionals, but with a spirituality of our great father, St. Augustine, and of our Lady of Consolation. Of course, those values are rooted in Christ. So we have values integration, uh, we incorporate values in the lessons in, of our students. And we also offer Augustinian spirituality classes here. In the introduction to, uh, of the Catholic school on the threshold of the third millennium, it states that on the threshold of the third millennium education faces new challenges which are the result of new social, political, and cultural contexts. First and foremost, we have a crisis of values. No, we, we have a crisis of values and I know you are aware of that. So in this present context, it is quite obvious that we are in a restless millennium. So as a Catholic institution, it is our mission to inculcate values formation to our students so that they will not just become uh, academically competent, but with the heart for the service of humanity. So allow me to present to you 
the six core values of La Consolation University Philippines that will facilitate to the building of the character of your children. So first is community orientedness. Community orientedness is fostering a spirit of friendship, unity, and interdependence based on mutual trust and respect to create a socially responsive environment that would challenge each one to be united and committed and reaching a common goal. Here in LCUP, we cultivate the spirit of friendship and it is our marks of being an Agustinian that is unique to us is that we are friendly to all. We should be approachable. So we strive to build unity among each other in the community by being friendly to all. In our communion, we become one mind and one heart of reaching our common goal. So even though you are in the different uh, departments, no, so make friends in the different uh, department departments within the university. And even to the basic education department, you know, to our young ones in the university. Next is compassion. So St. Augustine once said, and I quote, What does love look like? It has the hands to help others. It has the feet to hasten to the poor and needy. It has eyes to see the misery and want. It has the ears to hear the sighs and sorrows of men. That is what love looks like. So compassion is loving and extending our care for others by understanding their feelings, recognizing their needs, and responding to it. So we should not just uh, stay on understanding their feelings. So we should recognize that and respond to the needs of other people around us. So he, minsan, hindi na kailangan lumabas sa university just to extend our compassion. Merong mga nasa tabi-tabi lang dyan na nangangailangan ng ating compassion. It could be your seatmate, your schoolmate, and even um, the other people around the university. So in the university, we are active in community extension services and other community social responsibility. So baka iba sa inyo ay from our uh, partner communities here in Bulacan. So nakikita niyo na merong mga estudyante na they are having their uh, exposure, their charism journey. So... Uh, or if it's in time of calamities, we respond to the needs of the people. So we are uh, responding no, to the preservation of the common home, our earth, disaster and calamities. And also we offer charitable acts because we are ordained no, as being consolations to respond to the needs of those who are suffering, those who are needy, uh, poor, and le uh, less privileged in our society. And our compassion should not be felt, but it should be seen in our daily lives. So, pwede tayo mag-extend ng other compassion sa ating mga kasama around sa university also. Or sa mga tao na makakasalubong nyo sa pagpasok at paglabas ng university. Next is courage. So courage is fostering the ability to freely express our thoughts and ideas. Bravely speaking the truth in a prudent manner. Having the audacity to give and accept brotherly or sisterly corrections, and doing the right thing that is based on gospel values, even other people are doing the other way around. So this is very challenging, no? 
to to stand for your no to stand for what is right even though others uh, will not support you so as an Agustinian no we create our students that uh, to become courageous in expressing their thoughts their ideas and their knowledge but of course uh, still in a prudent manner for it is wisdom to know what, when, and where to speak or to keep quiet. No, to know and to master oneself is a strength and not a weakness. So take note of that there, students. And it is better to do right based on gospel values than to think that we are always right. So kaya, next to courage is humility. No, accepting our reality and the sacredness in us and of others, allowing us to recognize and appreciate our strengths and limitations, willingly accepting feedbacks and, and or brotherly or sisterly corrections and taking the opportunity to transcend and learn from those. And for being grateful to God for uniquely creating us for a certain purpose. So, uh, as Augustinians, we value and appreciate the corrections and feedbacks from other people because we want our students you know, to transcend to the best version of themselves. So, we learn from each other. We learn from uh, the corrections from other people also. Ito na yung kakambal ng courage, no? We speak our our thoughts, but of course, there are also times that we know that we are not right. So we should humble ourselves that not in all times we know, we know all things. So the humility also to accept that we need others to reach the ladder of success and the greatness in the eyes of Next core value is interiority. So, turning inward, a return to our inner self, encountering the reality of our self in sinfulness through prayer, reflection, and contemplative silence for us to transcend to an ultimate encounter with God. So, it is very important, no, to to embody this uh, value, interiority. Uh, here in LCUP, we are all invited to grow in the interiority of St. Augustine. We should have a constant entering into ourselves that will surely lead us to our growth and self-knowledge and the knowledge of God. So through here in LCUP, you know, through the integral evangelization program office we provide spiritual programs and activities such as masses recollections retreats faith life sharing and we also offer theology classes to our students so that they will have time to 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 pray to reflect to contemplate and to connect with their god so I am encouraging you, their students, if there are schedules for masses in the university, uh, please attend. No, please attend our masses. And also, if it's not your schedule for mass, please visit no the our chapel. So start your day connecting to our God. So our uh, ating uh, chapel is found in the heart of the university. Okay, so malapit ito sa basic education department. Okay, the sixth um, core value is missionary spirit. So according to St. Augustine, the degree to which you are concerned for the common good rather than for your own is the criterion by which you can judge how much progress you have made. So missionary spirit is 
living a life that touches others, a life of witnessing the examples and teachings of Christ, the boldness to respond to the call of time. And LCUP, we facilitate the discovery of our students' greater purpose in life. So, Consolanians are challenged to imitate Christ by allowing others to in Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, and our person. So, we are called to evangelize the world through our life witness. So, dear students, in order for you to easily remember our six core values, uh, tatandaan niyo yung tatlong C, 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 and then H, I, M, or HIM. So, tatlong C stands for community orientedness, compassion, courage, and then H for humility, I for interiority, and M for missionary spirit. So, CCC, HIM. So, we believe that our six core values no, will, will help you build your character here in LCU. So before I will end my presentation, I would like to stress that the Consolation University is more than just an institution to acquire quality academic knowledge, but most importantly, LCUP is an avenue to foster Augustinian modern spirituality and values formation necessary for the development of the whole human person for life and for mission. In LCUP, you are molded to be of one mind and one heart, both learned and effective on the way of success and on the way to God. Once again, our dear parents, guardians, and students from the college department, welcome to the Consulate of the Philippines. Here in LCUP, quality learning doesn't occur. LCUP makes it happen. Thank you very much and God bless us all. See you around. Thank you po, Sister Mary. So just like what Sister Mary said, CCCHIM, Community Orientedness, Compassion, Courage, Humility, Interiority, and Missionary Spirit. Let us not only be familiar with those six words, but let us instill those core values in ourselves. So it's just so nice that LCUP will really mold us, not only mentally, but holistically. So we should not only read scriptures, but cultivate virtue. So before moving on to the next part of our orientation, let's have a super short kamustahan. When I say super short kamustahan, can you comment below the emoji that best describes your emotions or feelings right now? So, kung masaya ka, may, pwede ba kayo mag-comment ng happy face? Sad, sad face, kung malungkot ka, a heart is in love ka. Kasi kung ako ang mag-comment, may ko-comment ko yung emoji na happy face with star eyes. Yung emoji na excited because I am really excited to hear what our other speakers prepared for this afternoon. Ayan. So I see some students commenting below. So thank you so much for your participation. So now, on to the next part of our orientation. Our speakers will talk about the facility services and resources in our university. So to start off and discuss about the student services in our university, let us all welcome the Director of Student Affairs, Dr. Rosaline S. Galvez. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Ms. Kiana. So, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, our dear consolations. Okay, so I'm here to give you a glimpse of what is student affairs and services. So, truly, what is this department and what are the different programs and services given by the student affairs and services? So, let's start. Okay, 
So, Student Affairs and Services of La Consolacion University Philippines is a group of collaborative Catholic Augustinian Marian community that delivers quality services and places the student's welfare and well-being in support of quality and innovative education so that LCUP's graduate will be globally competitive and competently equipped to respond to the needs and challenges of the times. Moreover, um, LCUP SAS warrants to provide quality services to ensure holistic student development through the different support services and co- and extracurricular programs from the basic education department, higher education, and the graduate school in light of the Catholic Augustinian Marian spirituality, nationalism, global competitiveness, and responsiveness to the changing local, national, and international environment. So what are the different services and programs? So all in all, they, um, the Student Affairs and Services, or more commonly known as SAS, is divided into three major categories. The first one is what we call on as the SWS or the Student Welfare Services. When we say Student Welfare Services or the SWS, these are basic services and programs that are needed to ensure and promote the well-being of students, our dear consolidates. The second category is the Student Development Services or the SDS. These are the services and programs which are designed for the exploration, enhancement, and even development of the student's full potential for personal development, leadership, and social responsibility through various institutional or even student-initiated activities. While the last category is the institutional student programs and services, or known as the ISPS. These are the different services and programs which are designed to proactively respond to the basic health, food, shelter, and safety concern of students, including students with special needs and disabilities, and even the schools. Okay? Now, Moreover, these are the different services under those categories. Under the SWS, we have the information and orientation services, just like what we are doing right now, the guidance and counseling services, the testing services, and even the career and job placement services. Now, under the SDS, we have the student activities and the student discipline. While under the ISPS, we have the admission services, the health services, the student financial aid, the sports development program, the food services, and the latest and additional to our department, the ISPS, which is the culture and arts program. So let's go on one by one per category. And let's start with the first category, and that's the student welfare services. Okay? When we say information and orientation services, we refer for, uh, to this as the informative activities as what Ms. Kiana have mentioned from the start. So these are the informative activities and materials designed to facilitate student adjustment to student life. It is a set, um, uh, so uh, we usually do this activity at the start of the school year, okay? While guidance and, uh, guidance and counseling services are a set of services using an integrated approach to the development of a well-functioning individuals, primarily by helping uh, our students to utilize their potential to the fullest. And how do we do this? We can do this by counseling, appraisal, through follow-up, and even through referrals. Now, the third one is the testing services. Testing services means of securing information about an individual objectively. So, what are this information? These might be abilities, aptitudes, and even interests which are previously unrevealed. 
especially unexplored ones. And usually, standardized testing is done within the school year. And the last one is the career and job placement. This refer to the assistance provided to the students in making informed educational and occupational, explorational, and career planning. So, who are the personnel under the SWS or the Student Welfare Services in the college um, unit? So, these are the following. Our SWS is headed by our coordinator, Professor Maria Isabel Guevara. Together with her is... Ms. Pelomena De Jesus, our guidance counselor. We have Ms. Connie Magsino as our, as our psychometrician and wellness officer. We have Ms. Ira Alvaro as our psychometrician. And we have Mr. Cedric Cabala as our psychometrician and career and job placement officer. So all in all, they are the personnel under the SWS uh, on the college department. Next is the SDS, the Student Development Services, or the Student Activities and the Student Discipline. So all in all, of course, we are familiar when we say student activities, this refer to the recognition or accreditation or even supervision and monitoring of students' group, including the evaluation of their activities. While on the other hand, student discipline refers to the judicious implementation of institutional rules and regulation governing student behavior and conduct. So who are the personnel um, um, behind this unit? We have, okay, head, the, the unit is headed by Ms. Chandrena Torecha, our coordinator of SDS, at the same time the college activity officer. Together with her is Mr. Nino Vencesejas, our college discipline officer. So especially yung mga mag um, in-person classes in our university, mostly sila yung makikita yung iikot para bisitahin kayo at i-check yung inyong discipline, um, discipline matters or if you are following our protocol. Okay, aside from our health services. Okay? Now, the last category, the ISPS. There are several, there are six. Okay, so let's start with the first one, and that's the admission services. When we say admission ser services, this refer to the services that takes care of the processing of students' entrance and requirement. I bet um, our new students and trans yung transferees um, and freshmen are familiar with these services, okay? Kasi dito kayo unang nagdaan when you enroll to our university. The second one is the health services. This refers to the provision of primary health care and wellness program. Okay, so sila po yung unang-unang nakikita natin sa gate kapag pumasok tayo. They are checking, okay, our, um, yung ating uh, temperature, no? Nagpapacheck ng temperature. So sila po yung mga personal natin under that. Now, the student financial aid refer to the management, generation, and even allocation of funds for scholarship and financial aid to deserving students. While the sports development program are programs that are designed for physical fitness and wellness of our students. Now, the food services refer to the insurance of available, adequate, safe, and even healthful food within the campus. And lastly, the culture and arts program refer to a set of activities designed to provide opportunities to develop and enhance talent, abilities, and values for appreciation, promotion, and conservation of national culture and multicultural heritage. So all in all, these are the services under the ISPS. So who are the personnel? Okay in charge of the following services. Let's start with the admission services. Our admission services is headed by our admission officer, Ms. Gurley Mayoyo. Together with her are the three admission staff, Ms. Lynette Acuna, Mr. Ruel Ignacio, and Ms. Divina Flor Capilli. So they are the personnel behind the admission services. Next is the SFA unit. This is uh, the SFA unit is 
manned by Mr. Ruel Ignacio, our SFA officer. So our scholars, kilalang kilala niya siya, no? kasi lagi niya siyang nakakausap. Okay? Next is our health services. Ito kilalang kilala niyo din. No? So the health services unit is headed by our health services officer. We have Miss Joy Ann Carlos. Together with Miss Joy Ann Carlos is our university physician. We have Dr. Maria Salome Agnes Sumadlayon and our university dentist, Dr. Joan Bernardo. Together with them are our university nurses. We have Miss Alayla Aguilar, Miss Marian Alcantara, Mr. Jason Reyes, Miss Jennifer Galvez, and Miss Irene Bernard. So these are our personnel behind the health services unit. Next is our sports development program. Okay, so for our sports de development program officer, we have Professor Rory Mar Maliani. And lastly, but not the least, our personnel behind culture and arts program. This is manned by our culture and arts program officer, Professor Ronielito Cruda. Okay, so all in all, these are the different personnel under the Student Affairs and Services or SAS, SAS. Yes, um, before I end my presentation, remember our dear consulanians that the Student Affairs and Services is always here for you to help. Just know who are the, the person na pwede niyo pong lapitan, enable for you, to, to have those different services and programs that I have presented to you earlier. With that, I welcome you all to La Consolacion University of Philippines. Thank you so much. And thank you po, Dr. Galvez, for giving us a thorough explanation about student affairs services. Na mayroon pala ang three kategory ang SAS. Ito ang student development services, Student Welfare Services, and Institutional Students Program and Services. Again, thank you for that very important talk. So, habang tumatagal, mas nagiging excited na akong malaman ang ibang mga hinanda ng ating speakers this afternoon. So, on to the next. The next university services that will be discussed today is something that we are all familiar of. Kasi hindi ka makapag-aral sa LCUP if hindi ka nakapag-communicate sa... Siyempre sa registrar because one of their tasks is to oversee the admission of new students and overall enrollment. And to talk about the role and importance of the registrar, let us now call on our university registrar, Dr. Maria Lourdes Cervantes. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon, Ms. Kiana. Okay, so I'll be sharing with you uh, the different services, different documents that you can request at the office of the university registrar. Okay, so to begin with, uh, I'd like to introduce to you the people working with me at the office of the university registrar for academic year 2022-2023. So yours truly, the department head, university registrar. And I have here our records officer, Ms. Joanna Linoy and Mr. Francis Ocampo. Our records custodian, Ms. Candy Santo Domingo and Mr. Jesse Lito Cortez. Our register staff, Mr. Jan Levin Gueco and Ms. Marilyn Valerio. Ms. Shane R. Lopez and Ms. Nicole Balahadia, both register staff. And our LIS coordinator, Ms. Jenny Rose Naval. So what are the functions of the registrar's office? First is the organizing, safekeeping, and administering student records. We are also facilitating and overseeing the student enrollment and graduation processes. Your grades are all, uh, we do have copies of your grades and also document credential requirements and requisition. Rest assured that our office is really adhering to the Data Privacy Act of 2012. So whatever information that you have with us, it is protected and it is safe. So what are the common documents? na pwede ninyong i-request at the Office of the University Registrar. Of course, your Certificate of Registration or the COR. You can check if you are holding a valid 
certificate of registration, you can check dun sa upper uh, portion ng inyong mga COR na nakalagay na official certificate of registration and also the signatory is yours truly. Of course, your diploma, we are the one processing your diploma, Form 137, permanent record for senior high school and K-10, to transfer credentials, certificate of bona fide, wherein for those students who are planning to go abroad, they need to get a certificate that they are bona fide students of the university. Certification, authentication, and verification, complete academic requirements, course description, cumulative grade point average or general weighted average, English as medium of instruction, letter of no objection and ranking, as well as units earned and certificate of grades. So if ever that you cannot uh, visit our office physically and uh, your parents cannot do so, what you can do is to send an authorized representative to transact whatever requisition, requisition that you need. So you need to provide us with an authorization letter of course, photocopy of the student ID and for minor, photocopy of uh, government ID ng parent or gar guardian and also a photocopy of the representative. And there is a separate authorization letter for request and claiming of documents. So if ever that you will be sending the representative to request on your behalf, that is one authorization letter. And during the claiming schedule, you cannot uh, come to the office. You can also send an authorized representative provided that the indicated authorization is for the claiming of your documents. So if you are going to visit our LCUP website, you can click on the register tab at what you can see are the useful links as well as the documents that we are issuing and the frequently asked questions which might be helpful for our students and parents. And in case that you need to request for a document, you can do it online if you cannot do it face to face. So the links are provided here at the LCUP website, just click on the register tab. And also our contact information, our telephone number, our email address is also indicated in the website. And later on, I'll be showing you the email address as well as the contact information of the office. So let us begin with the admissions requirements. Some students are not familiar with the admissions requirements. They think that once they have submitted documents online, it's uh, okay now. But it's not like that. If you are a, newly, a new student here at the university, you need to submit the following documents. So what are those? First is one piece two by two ID picture. Of course, recent po ito, hindi yung mga bata pa kayo, yung recent na itsura po ninyo and you are wearing a decent attire. Report card or ito po yung tinatawag natin na Form 138 kung kayo ay nag senior high school, grade 12. What we need is an original copy of your Form 138 or your card. Another one is the Form 137 from your senior high school. Ang Form 137, this is the record ng inyong buong senior high school. You cannot get this from your previous school, not unless you have a request slip coming from our office. So paano mag-request? You can do it online. I, I have shown you earlier kung nasaan yung ating uh, useful links wherein you can request documents from our office. And if ever that you have face-to-face -face classes, you can also do that and transact in our office. And of course, what we need is the PSA or NSO birth certificate na original. What is the use for asking for PSA? We are verifying your names, your middle initial, your middle name, and your surname. The correct spelling, of course, yung birthday ninyo. But if there is an update, let's say nagbago kayo ng address, you can make changes in your student portal. Ano po ang student portal? That is the school automate system that we are using here at LCUP. You can find the link doon po sa ating LCUP website. Another requirement is a certificate of good moral character. Original din po ang hinihingi natin ito. And also photocopy of your senior high school diploma. And all of these hard copies should be submitted in one long brown envelope with your name 
and of course, your department and program or yung course po ninyo. So sa likod ng envelope, you have to write your name clearly and um, the department where you belong. So for those people or a fe married female individuals, you also need to submit a PSA or NSO marriage certificate. So these are the requirements for our college first-year students and for our transferees, same lang din. But the only difference is that we are asking for the official transcript of records with remarks copy for LCUP. There are students na nag-transfer po at nagpa-credit during evaluation with our respective deans. However, hindi po iyon makikita agad sa system. Bakit po? Hindi siya agad mag appear sa system because we are still waiting for the official transcript of records from your previous school. So what you can do is to request for a uh, permanent record request form dito po sa office or online so that we can send a request to you or you can get it here ng sa on-site para po makakuha ninyo yung inyong transcript of records doon sa previous school. And once we receive your official transcript of records, tsaka lang natin makikredit sa system yung mga subjects na nakredit ng ating mga dean. No? So those are the admissions requirements for our transferee. This is an example or the sample document for the permanent record request form. Ito ang kukunin ninyo so that you could be able to ask for a copy of your form 137 for new students and for transferees. Ito rin po ang hihingi natin. Okay? So this is a uh, the form used for returning students. Ito po yung mga studyante na let's say nag-stop for uh, one semester or one year. Bago po kayo mag-enroll, you have to get the student returning slip and accomplish the form. So you have to submit this at the finance office, discipline, and of course, dito po sa aming office at approve ng respective dean of the department. So let's talk about the maximum residency. Ibig sabihin, how long can you stay in the university? For courses, let's say four-year course, the maximum number of year is five years. For five-year courses, six years ang maximum to complete the program. Let's say nag-exceed po kayo. If you exceeded the required or the allowable maximum number of years, you have um, this is subject for evaluation pa rin. Kung isang SEM na lang, you can write a letter. However, kung medyo matagal pa rin, we can no longer allow you to continue the program in the university. So please take note of that. Now, student registration. So yung student registration, you have to comply with the requirements and, and must follow the enrollment procedure. So we do have enrollment online and on-site. So your name will only be included in the official list submitted to CHED if you are officially enrolled. So please Make it a habit, pag nag-enroll po kayo, you have to check your CORs. Kung kayo po ay online nag-enroll, papadalan po namin kayo with your registered email address. But let us be careful in writing our email addresses. You have to check the correct spelling kasi po minsan na may miss out po. Kaya hindi kayo nakaka-receive ng official COR simply because the email address that you have given is not correct. no? And also, we are releasing a schedule for the adding, changing, and dropping of subjects. Later on, you have to look into our official Facebook page for the scheduled adding, changing, and dropping of subjects. Ito po ay during the allowable period lamang. You can change the subjects that you have enrolled. You can also drop and you can also add as long as it is within the number of units per semester. Let's say, for example, for BSN, for first semester, second year, 24 units ang kanilang regular load. So you can only take the 24 units for that particular semester. And also, uh, you also have to observe the proper sequencing of subjects. For those students who are classified as irregular students, kailangan po natin i-check if we are enrolling the correct subject. Why? There are subjects, especially in the higher level, that has prerequisites. Let's say, for example, 
uh, you're taking Theology 3. So before you can reach or enroll Theology 3, you have to enroll Theology 1, Theology 2. So Theology 2 is a prerequisite of Theology 3. And Theology 1 is a prerequisite of Theology 2. Okay? So there is no... Um, uh, advanced subject na hindi nyo pa nakukuha yung prerequisite. So, you have to check saan po natin makikita yung ating prerequisites. You can check that doon sa curriculum na meron kayo. Ang curriculum po, you can check that doon sa inyong uh, student portal under the school automate system. And let's say you are a graduating student at meron ka pang kulang na subjects. You are allowed to add more, two subjects only or six academic units in excess of your normal load. Kung ang normal load ng isang graduating student for a particular semester is 20, 24 units, and then you can add two more. So that is a total of 30 units. Hindi po tayo pwedeng mag-exceed. But in exceptional cases, a non-graduating student may be allowed to enroll for a failed subject in addition to the normal load to regain their regular status. So shifting to another course needs the approval of the department dean and, of course, the university registrar. For our academic policy, student, uh, student grades are based on the results of the formal examination. So you also have other requirements such as recitation, projects, quizzes, assignment, and general conduct in class. So marks or grades in a subject consisting of lectures and laboratory are weighed accordingly and expressed as complete mark or grade. So iba po ang uh, grade ng laboratory and uh, lecture. No? So in average yung dalawa na yon to get the final grade of the student. So that's how it works. And the averaging system of computing for the final grade is used, let's say, prelims, midterms, and finals. You average the three, and that is your final grade. So the faculty concerned may also give you a mark of NG, no grade, or NC, no credit, when a student did not take the final examinations or did not satisfactorily perform in the subject. So pwede kayong bigyan ng NG. So how do we comply with a mark of NG? Later on, I'll be discussing it with you. So just to give you a guide, this is our grading system or our numerical grades with their equivalent percentage as well as the verbal description. So if you receive the mark of 1, the equivalent is 98 to 100, and that is excellent. 1.25, 95 to 97, and that is superior. For 1.5, 92 to 94, very good. 1.75, 89 to 91, which is good. 2, 86 to 88, very satisfactory. 2.25, 83 to 85, satisfactory. 2.5, 80 to 82, fairly satisfactory. 2.75, 77 to 79, fair. 375 to 76, and that is still a passing rate. But if you obtain the grade of 74 below, that is equivalent to 5, and that is a failing mark, and you have to repeat the subject again. So for the reminders, if ever that you wanted to print out or to have a hard copy of your grades, you can check and view your grades online during the scheduled viewing of grades. Kailan po ang schedule? We are providing information to your respective deans on when can students view their grades. So there is a specific time period only. So this is the school automate system wherein you can log in using your respective usernames and passwords. So this is how it looks like. And then, let's talk about the policy on academic deficiency, delinquency, the loading, and retention. Of course, your dean or your program head shall remedy academic delinquency by implementing the following measures. You will be given a verbal warning if you obtained a failing mark in one subject, and you shall receive a warning from the dean or the program head. Verbal warning shall be documented through the consultation form. 
And then, written warning is given to a student who failed to, due to absences or obtained failing grades in two or more subjects. And you shall be placed in an academic contract to serve as a written warning and subject to probation for the succeeding semester. His or her load shall be reduced as determined by the academic head or dean. Now, what is academic probation? So this is given to a student who failed due to absences or obtained failing mark in one subject. So you shall be advised to shift to another course subject to the approval of the department head or the dean and the vice president for academic affairs, specifically for board courses. We are very particular about that. So let's say you are a shifty. A shifty born out of probationary proceedings shall be placed on probation for one school year. A student on probation shall not incur a failing grade in one subject during probationary period. So whether it is a minor subject or a major subject, once you are under probation, there is no room for a failing mark sa inyong entire uh, stay po sa university once you are under probation. So permanent disqualification, a student who accumulates 24 academic units of failing grades except for health, medical, family-related, and financial reasons is disqualified to continue, discontinue her studies in the university. However, if there are only 48 academic units left before graduation, the student will still be allowed to enroll, provided provided a deloading of six academic units is made to allow for a better academic performance during the semester. So education courses under the College of Arts, Sciences, and Education, any student who obtains a grade of 3.0 in any of the subjects enrolled in the semester will be automatically advised to transfer to another program. So lahat po ng education courses under case, so please be careful na magkaroon kayo ng 3.0 in any of the subjects that you enrolled. For BSA or Bachelor of Science in Accountancy under College of Business Administration, any student who obtains a grade below 2.5 in any of the major subjects under the accountancy program shall be advised to either re-enroll the subject or to transfer to BSBA or to another program. So there is a specific policy under the Sibeya uh, Department for BSA. So you have to be careful uh, about it. While for the College of Allied Medical Sciences, any student who obtains a grade of 3.0 in any of the subjects enrolled in the semester will be automatically advised to transfer to another program. So any mark na 3.0, regardless if it's a major or minor subject, you will be advised to transfer to another program. So that is for the Allied and Medical Sciences. Now, let's say you obtained an INC mark for this particular subject. Kailan natin mababago ang INC mark? Please take note that your INC mark should be completed and complied within one year. Let's say ngayon, first semester. So you have until first semester of school year 2023 to 2024 to comply for the INC mark. But take note that once you obtain an INC mark, hindi na po ito mawawala sa system or sa inyong transcript of records even if you have complied. No? So the student must complete the requirements within the semester following that in which the course was taken. Otherwise, after one year, mago automatic failing mark po iyan, or 5.0 sa system. And you have to repeat the subject. So the highest grade that you can get once you obtain an INC mark is 1.25. You can no longer um, obtain a grade of 1.0 once na nagkaroon ka ng INC mark. 
So this is the completion form that you have to accomplish. Once you accomplish the completion form, you have to present it and give it to your faculty dun sa subject na may hawak and also it should be signed by the dean. And then the office of the dean will forward the completion form to them not allowed to submit the completion form, only the department secretary or the faculty involved. No? So please take note of that. You are not allowed and you only have one year to comply. Now, let's say you found out that there was um, an intentional error. So hindi sinasadya, nagkaroon ng pagkakamali or baka nalito sa pagkocompute ng grade nyo. Pwede i-correct ang grade. So, how long naman ang correction ng grade? I've been receiving a lot of correction of grades for the past years. So, for this year, we will be very strict in implementing the correction of grades policy. So, how do we go along with it? First is that you can file a written complaint doon po sa inyong department stating the reason kung bakit kailangan i-correct yung grade ninyo. So, it can be the student, it can be the faculty, or the dean, or the parent. So, there should be a written explanation or written complaint about the grade in that particular subject. Upon the receipt of the letter of complaint, the department chairperson or the department head or the dean shall convene a committee composed of all the faculty members of the department and the dean herself or himself. And then the student will be invited to attend committee hearings. So there should be a hearing, an explanation coming from the faculty and also the student, and it should be documented. So, investigation shall include scrutiny and discussion of all entries of grades or scores up to the final exam. So, this data should be given to the committee prior to the meeting to allow time for the members to study. And if it is accepted, report of the change of grade addressed to the registrar noted by the dean shall include a written explanation by the teacher or faculty member who allowed a change of grade. Supporting papers such as class record and also the documented evidences such as your written works or the requirements for that particular subject. And any petition for change of grade will no longer be accepted when the report on promotion has been submitted to the registrar by the registrar to the CHED. Let's say, for example, ngayong SEM na ito, there is a correction of grade. We are giving enough time to accomplish the requirements. So you have until the following semester, which is second semester, to correct the grades. However, the attachments that I have mentioned should be complete if you are going to request for a correction of grade. So this is the example form or the form used for correcting grade in the system. So it should be signed by the faculty. And of course, the, the dean uh, of the department. And of course, it should be approved by yours truly. So the subject code is, should be reflected and written as well as the subject name or the subject description. The school year and semester na kinuha ng bata at in-enroll po ito. The grade entered and of course, the correct grade. And the purpose should also be um, stated here or the reason why is there a need to correct the grade of the student? Now, let's talk about DIN's list. A lot of students are quite confused on how do we compute the DIN's list. First and foremost, you have to uh, qualify with the following criteria. First, yung residency requirements of two consecutive semesters. That's why pagpasok nyo ng second year, if you are first year, tsaka lang po kayo magka-qualify for the DIN's list. So, how do we compute for that? Yung grades po ninyo ng first SEM and second SEM is included para mag-qualify sa DIN's list. First criteria, you should not obtain any grade lower than 2.0 in all subjects. Meaning, 2.0 and above for major and minor subjects. And only final grades for each subject shall be considered for the computation of the general weighted average. 
once you have obtained an INC mark or incomplete mark with a particular subject, you can no longer qualify for the dean's lister. So, hindi na kayo makakasama. And a student must not have repeated any of his or her major or minor subject in any other educational institution. But we have, um, as mentioned earlier by our VPAA, we are very much flexible. So we are considering yung student transferees. However, yung student transferees, they should be classified as regular students na before they can apply as one of the dense list. Bakit? Kailangan po kumpleto yung subjects for each semester. Let's say, one, uh, first sem, kung wala yung subject dyan, anim lang yung nakuha mo, hindi ka na-qualified. So, kailangan walo at nakakategorize ka as regular student na. In case the student transfer is about to graduate, grades from the previous educational institution shall be considered. So, tinitingnan po natin yung inyong grade dun sa previous school even if hindi nyo po kinuha dito. If you have failing marks in the previous school, that is also one of the basis para ma-disqualify po kayo. Another thing, all aspiring students who have complied with the criteria qualification should formally apply for the dense list. Ina-apply ang dense list. Saan po ito ina-apply? We have implemented, because of the pandemic, the online application. Pero hindi po siya forever na nakadisplay or nag accept ng application. With the specific time frame lang. Let's say, for example, one week lang yung application period. It is posted doon po sa ating official Facebook page ng LCUP. And also, the deans are sending the links para po doon sa application ng deans list. So, you are not allowed to take advanced subjects if you wanted to qualify sa DINS list natin. DINS listers should strictly comply with the requirement of the curriculum. Otherwise, they will be disqualified from the role. For students who shifted from one course to another due to academic policies of the program, grades credited from the previous program shall be included in the computation. Let's say, for example, uh, from... Um, from BSA, lumipat ka ng BSBA because of the program academic policy. Pag nag-apply ka as dense list, tinitingnan pa rin po natin yung nakredit na subject na nanggaling doon sa BSA program. So kung iyon po ay 2.0 below or 2.25, let's say, hindi ka rin magkukwalify. So, included yon sa criteria. Pero, when we compute for the GWA to determine kung ano pong klaseng um, uh, discount ang ibibigay sa inyo, yung IS, NSTP, and Theology subjects are not included dun po sa computation ng inyong general weighted average. But, it is very significant because the second criteria ay kasama yung IS, NSTP, and Theology. Later on, I'll show you a sample computation. So, qualified students from the DINS list shall be given a certificate signed by the University Registrar, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and University President. So, this school year, we are going to issue certificates for those DINS lister. So, lahat ng DINS lister na nag-qualify will be given a certificate. Pero hindi po siya agad-agad na kukuha. Uh, ito po ay binibigyan natin ng schedule para maayos po tayo. For those uh, qualified dense lister for school year 2021 and 2022, we will be posting an announcement on when you can claim dito sa office yung inyong mga uh, medals for the dense list ng school year 2021-2022. Again, I would like to reiterate that beginning 2022-2023 na school year, we will be giving certificates instead of medals because a lot of uh, students are asking for certificates na as a proof that they belong to the dense list instead of the medal. So it's very useful compared to the one that we are giving for the past years. 
Now, uh, discount privileges are given to students who qualified for the DINS list. As mentioned earlier, two consecutive semesters yung ating criteria for you to qualify. Kung ang inyong average grade, ito po yung GWA na hindi kasama yung NST, PIS, and theology subjects is not lower than 1.25 you can get 100% discount for the tuition fee. However, yung sinasabi ko kanina na second criteria, with no grade lower than 1.5. Ang tinitingnan naman dito is lahat ng subject. Kasama po yung IS, NSTP, and theology subjects. Ito yung second criteria. Para makita natin kung saan po kayo magpo-fall, kung 100%, 50%, or 25%. Now, if you are under... The socialized uh, program or scholarship program offered by LCUP or what we call LCUP FAP, you can choose kung kayo po ay dense lister. You can choose yung sa dense lister kung sa tingin niyo is mas magiging beneficial sa inyo. Remember that LCUP FAP is different from the dense list, no? So if you will be choosing yung inyong discount sa dense list, what you can do is to submit a letter of intent addressed to the university president and the VPAA and the dean. No? Pero once po na lumipat kayo at na-approve yung paglipat ninyo from LCUP FAP to dense lister na discount privileges, hindi na po kayo makakabalik doon sa LCUP FAP. So you have to really work hard to maintain yung inyong discount privilege in terms of being a qualified dense lister. So again, yung second criteria, ito po iyon, yung with no grade lower than 1.5, 1.75, and 2.0. This is the second criteria wherein kasama yung IS, NSTP, and Theology. So how do we compute I have here a sample computation if for everyone's knowledge. So let's say, for example, ito yung subject ninyo for first semester. Remember, I, I indicated here the of five for discussion purposes. And for second semester, wala kang theology. No? So here are your grades. What we do, yung final grade na na-encode sa system, multiply dun sa units. And then yung, yung product, ina-add po lahat ng product. Tapos, i-divide mo sa total number of units ng dalawang semester. So yung, yung product ng first sem at second sem divided by total units ng first sem and second sem. Halimbawa, medyo tumaas lang po yung aking computation dito. Eh, no? So product divided by total units, again, combined first sem and second sem. So, ang nakuha natin is 51.25 divided by 37. So, that is the total units for first semester and second semester. 1.38. So, pag ni-round off mo siya, 1.39 ang jiwa. So, 25% lang ang makukuha niya. Bakit hindi po siya pumasok dun sa 1.5 na qualification? Kasi meron siyang grade na 2.0 sa kanyang theology during the first semester. Ito yung second criteria. Kaya hindi siya nag-fall dun sa um, higher level. So that is how we compute. Remember, GWA, hindi kasama yung NST, PIS, and theology. Pero dun sa second criteria, kasama na po yung mga subjects na yon. Now, uh, since we're done with the Dean's Lister, Ngayon naman, if you wanted to receive an award para sa pag-graduate ninyo, we are also giving Latin honors for those qualified students. So, with merit, yung academic distinction. With honors, cum laude. With higher honors, that is manya cum laude. With highest honors, summa cum laude. For academic awards, to determine a student's general weighted average, the same lang yung computation natin. Pero, this time, first year to fourth year ang computation para mag-qualify ka for the Latin honors. Same lang din yung process with the computation. 
So, hindi natin sinasama yung NSTP, Theology, and IS subject for the computation. Pero, yung sa second criteria again, 2.0 yung pinaka mababa na grade in all subjects, major or minor. So, candidates for the summa cum laude should meet a general weighted average of not less than 1.25 and no grade lower than 1.5 in any subject. Lahat yan, first year to fourth year. And of course, uh, units required for the completion of the course were taken at LCUP. For mania cum laude, you must have a general weighted average of 1.5 with no grades lower than 1.75 in any subject and at least three years residency at LCUP. For cum laude, you must have a general weighted average of 1.75 and no grades lower than 2.0 in any subject with a residency again of three years at LCUP. For academic distinction, academic distinction awardees at should earn the following qualifications. Residency of at least two years with no grades lower than 2.0 in all major subjects. And isa lang dapat ang 2.25 sa mga minor. So kung nagkaroon ka ng 2.25 at isa lang yon, pwede ka pa rin mabigyan ng academic award which is the academic distinction. For transferees to qualify for merit or honors, he or she should comply with the minimum qualifications. The review of grades shall cover earned units from the previous institution and LCUP, subject again for the review of the university registrar upon the recommendation of your uh, department head or the dean and approval of the vice president for academic affairs. Again, for transferees, you can qualify. However, yung grades from the previous school is also considered in the criteria I have mentioned earlier. Now, loyalty award. Kailan po tayo magkakaroon ng loyalty award? This is given to graduates who have been at LCUP or any OSA schools from grade 1 to grade 12, grade 12 to college, college to graduate school, graduate school to postgraduate. And of course, you must have shown exemplary conduct. Otherwise, you will be subject for disqualification. So, wala kayong record sa ating SAS office. Pag meron kayong record at any violation dun sa ating student handbook, you will be disqualified from the loyalty award. Fidelity. Yung fidelity naman from grade 1 hanggang college ay sa LCUP o kaya any OSA schools. Pero kung kayo ay halimbawa graduate nga kayo ng OSA school ng um, let's say grade 6 pero nag-transfer ka pala. Grade 2, transfer ka pala doon. Hindi ka pa rin magka-qualify for loyalty nor fidelity. Dapat complete Doon po natin kinuha sa OSA school or at LCUP para mag-qualify for the loyalty or fidelity award. And here are the special awards given during graduation. Leadership Award, Mother Rita Barcelo Award, Job Placement Award, Best in Feasibility Study, Best in System Design, Best in Hardware Design, Best in Capstone Project, International Exposure Award, Outstanding Student Teacher, Campus Ministry Service Award, Journalism Award, Best in Performing Arts, Athlete of the Year, Best in Practicum, Special Service Award. And there are also some awards or special awards na binibigay po ng mga department head. But it is still subject for the approval of the SAS Director as well as our VPAA and of course our University President. So, recipients of the different special awards should have exemplary conduct and have never been involved in any form of violation of the university rules, regulations, and policies. Otherwise, students will not be qualified for any special awards including service, loyalty, and fidelity awards. For application of for graduation, so ina-apply din natin pag tayo ay gagraduate na. Though we do have the liberation, but still you need to file your application for graduation. And we also have different criterias before you can be 
uh, considered as a candidate for graduation. First is obtaining a passing grade in all subjects indicated in the curriculum. All candidates for graduation must have cleared all subject deficiencies and requirements of their currently enrolled subjects prior to the set deadline of the university registrar. Compliance with all NSTP requirements, submission of all admissions requirements, I already mentioned that earlier, and of course, you don't have any financial obligations from the finance office. So you have to submit yung application for graduation form dito po sa aming office or for the past year, uh, we asked the assistance of the different departments to gather yung application for graduation and then tsaka po nila pino-forward dito. So kailangan properly filled up po yung inyong application for graduation. Otherwise, ibabalik po namin iyon. And then the approval of the eligibility for graduation by the Academic Council wherein nagkakaroon po kami ng deliberation for that particular ma uh, matter. And no student shall graduate unless he or she uh, of course, settles yung graduation fee, but we are very flex uh, flexible as mentioned earlier. And then, no additional student. Once na nakapag-convene na po ang academic council na ito lang yung graduates, hindi na po kami pwedeng magdagdag. Not unless na magkakaroon po ng addendum approved by the academic council and of course, VPAA and the university president. So after graduation naman po tayo, you will be getting your diploma and TOR. Yung TOR, as you can see here, it is a separate request. Hindi po siya kasama doon sa ating uh, package for the graduation fee. Bago po kayo makakuha ng diploma, kailangan nyo pa ng clearance. Same with TOR. So by schedule then yung ating diploma. Bakit po ang tagal? Kasi we are still working on the documentation and we are submitting it to CEDRO. No? Once they confirmed our, our, our submission of the said declaration of graduates, that is the time pa lang that we can release your diploma. So, hinihintay natin yung confirmation of graduates declaration from CHED. In case that you will be taking your board examination, if you requested for an official transcript of records, you have to submit two by two ID picture with white background and decent attire. It is uh, an imperative for you to submit that kasi requirement din po ng PRC before they will accept your application for the board exam. Honorable dismissal. Ano po yung honorable dismissal? Honorable dismissal or transfer credentials are for is for those uh, students na hindi natapos yung program. Kung second year, lumipat sa ibang school, ito po ang i-accomplish nila, yung honorable dismissal or transfer credentials. So, nagkiklearance din po ito, yung ating transfer credential request. Next, leave of absence. For everyone's knowledge, we are implementing since last year yung leave of absence. In case na mag-stop po kayo for one semester, remember, you have to file leave of absence na approved po ng respective administrators para kayo po ay magpahinga muna. Let's say for health reasons or any other reasons concerning your family, kung may, kayo ay may illness or whatever, that is allowed. So you are allowed for a maximum of one year para po sa leave of absence. At, and it won't affect yung maximum number of years to complete the program. But pag kayo po ay babalik na, you have to accomplish yung ating student return slip na pinakita ko po kanina. Pero um, hindi pa kayo bumalik after five years. But the university is still open for you. No? Tatanggapin po kayo ulit ng university provided that you will enroll as first year student again at wala pong makikredit sa inyong subjects. Bakit po ganun? Kasi po tayo ay nag update ng curriculum in compliance with uh, CHED and because of the different innovations that we have, nagbabago tayo ng curriculum. So, you have to repeat everything pag after five years na po kayo babalik. Okay, so I think I'm done. Once again, I have here the email address of the registrar's office, registrar's office at lcup.edu.ph and our contact number. So to all our parents, our old students, new students, and transferees, 
welcome the school year 2022-2023 and I hope that you will have your um, enjoyable and meaningful stay here at LCUP. Thank you. Thank you po, Dr. Cervantes, for discussing the documents that we need to complete for admission and the documents that we can re request from you, especially us, na fourth-year students, na marami nang ipaprocess na papers. And again, if you have more questions or concerns regarding yung grades, balance, and CUR, etc., makikita sa ating LCU website ang contact information ng ating university registrar. So, since the pandemic forbidden us to go to our campus, therefore, we are not able to use other facilities in our university. Isa na yun, isa na ang LCUP library. So, as a fourth-year student, I am fortunate enough to visit the LCUP library No first-year student ako no nagpa-face-to-face -face pa. And I hope yung mga new student or mga lower years will be able to utilize it soon. So, hopefully, this school year. So now to explain what our library offers, let us welcome the Director of Instructional Support Program, Dr. Maria Mercedes Haz. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to LCUP, Consolanian. So uh, for us, uh, for this school year 22-23, uh, we are so uh, open and willing to serve you. Uh, and this uh, school year, uh, we are preparing for you the following uh, uh, presentation. So allow us to present our presentation for this orientation. Uh, for our uh, dynamic and very supportive personnel, these are the people who are in charge of the different units uh, in the library, the, libra the librarian, the library personnel. Of course, uh, headed by our... that uh, the university library envision to be the leading academic resources center by providing digital online collection print non-print facilities equipment that is responsive uh, to contribute uh, a create and uh, create a strong resilient and informed academic community that support the university to become a catalyst for holistic transformational development of our student Catholic Agustinian Marian graduate, move and rooted in gospel values, engaging in excellence, blended, flexible learning modalities, physical and virtual spaces that uh, facilitate innovative collaboration, research, and social community involvement. Of course, uh, we cannot uh, support no, the university without our commitment no, for the mission, goals, and objective of the library information centers, which are really displayed and posted in our official website. Next, please. Of course, it's very important that the library is open from 7 o'clock to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday. And we are also open for Saturday for our uh, students who are uh, reporting or have classes during Saturday, our graduate school students and those who have classes or uh, have find the, I mean, the time to conduct research during this time, the library is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Of course, uh, we prepare uh, our services and resources for on-site and walk-in patrons. Uh, library rules and regulation is very important and definitely researchers should present the RFID and at present we are now conducting the uh, processing and uh, releasing of our uh, uh, RFID. Remember that the RFID is very important. This will be uh, used our uh, 
uh, this will be important in our system. No, uh, you you will top it. You will use it in any transactions of the university. Please uh, be mindful uh, that this is very uh, sensitive. No, and uh, you must be remember that uh, any correction. Uh, be sure that you have checked your name, your uh, data, and the information so that uh, we avoid some uh, alteration, correction, because uh, we have to provide supporting documents such as PSA, birth certificate, and other documents uh, for any correction. And this will be uh, done in the admission and the registrar's office for the correction of your information and data because we have to follow the uh, the law no uh, regarding uh, uh, data privacy okay so we also provide resources and services virtually for remote access and for that uh, information uh, the library personnel and uh, you know uh, the services that we provide, you may contact us no? in our uh, FB accounts, our uh, Jesuit accounts, uh, so that uh, you are able to provide us inquiries and information that we can deliver online and uh, we can have the immediate action no? uh, for your queries. Okay, this is how we organize the materials on the shelves using the Library of Congress represented by letters and you also provide a uh, location symbol for its collection for a better uh, I mean uh, browsing and selection in the shelves uh, this is uh, for this academic year and uh, even in previous uh, years that we have the university is very supportive to us to provide us online resources and this is how the uh, operation navigation of the online resources that is uh, uh, integrated in our uh, school automate okay so uh, please always remember your password and your uh, user's name using uh, our uh, school automate system okay so uh, one of the very important uh, provider that we have uh, the university subscribe in the EBSCO host and this is the home page and the different step a password and user's uh, name is also provided and uh, we really uh, i mean uh, provide the access uh, and distributed disseminated to the different department heads to our deans program heads and for those uh, faculty no uh, especially uh, for this academic years of course the official students official personnel faculty and administration uh, are have the privilege no and uh, uh, allowed to use our ebooks and uh, e-journal provided by the EBSCO host company this is how the step in the navigating and just follow no it is also posted in our school automate and uh, the website official website of the university Okay, so the university also are part of some of the professional organization such as MALAP, uh, Medical uh, Libraries Association, the Philippine uh, Association of the Philippines, uh, regional and the national level. And uh, with that, uh, we are uh, allowed to, uh, to uh, accept researchers no? and other uh, schools and uh, colleges and universities uh, to uh, use our facilities, however, there is this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, fee no, that will be paid at the finance office, uh, which is really uh, affordable. But at this time, you have to follow the health protocol of the different uh, libraries and different universities. No? Uh, we also uh, provide your referral letter if needed, but definitely we have to check first uh, if the universities or colleges are now accepting outside researchers. Okay, so we have also open uh, educational resources provided for you. Uh, these are posted also. You may navigate, you may check. Uh, we provide you this uh, pre-access uh, site on online. And uh, we also have uh, the different uh, electronic resources that we have. And be careful 
we need to be careful uh, for uh, some of the, uh, I mean, uh, information. Uh, it should be authentic. It should be uh, legit. And uh, it should be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, scholarly done. No, That's why uh, we need to be uh, critically and aware on how to spot the fake news and the fake information. These are the different open educational resources, e-books and e-journal provided in the different uh, departments so that you can uh, ample, uh, really select and uh, navigate and uh, be able to uh, uh, acquire information which are really uh, scholarly done by the different uh, institution, organization. Okay, for e-journals, of the different uh, department and the uh, colleges. Okay, to give you some glimpse of what is now the uh, facilities, no? Because the university, even it's pandemic, continuously uh, provide us uh, updating the facilities because of its commitment to excellence, no? So the university provide us uh, the updating and improving uh, make the university, uh, I mean, uh, environmental uh, friendly and uh, conducive to learning. So we have this facility. So this is from the St. Alassane building, where the library uh, of the college department at the graduate school are located. And of course, we follow no, the mandatory health protocol uh, for the new normal and uh, how we uh, served our uh, clientele, especially our student, our personnel, our visitors, our benefactors, uh, so that uh, we really uh, complied with uh, a protocol, uh, I mean, uh, provided by uh, the different uh, organization, and of course, the health protocol of the university. This is our, uh, the, space provided for you uh, in your research activity uh, but at this time we just only limited for limited face-to-face -face, uh, on-site walk-in however uh, we cannot accommodate uh, more students because we have to practice the social distancing this is our libraries the areas provided for you books are organized and the different uh, sections uh, that could uh, help you, especially uh, in support for your academic needs. Okay, so according to St. Augustine, education is the food of youth, the delight of all ages, the ornament of prosperity, the refuge and comfort of adversity, and the provocation to grace in the soul. With that, thank you so much. Stay safe and healthy. God bless and welcome to LCUP Library Information Centers. God bless to all. Thank you, po, Dr. Haas, for sharing the schedule, rules, and regulation of our university library, as well as how to ask students. So I still remember the time when we went to the library to shoot videos for our previous projects when I was a first-year student. So time really moves fast. And moving on to the next topic to give us an explanation of what is MIS, I would like to introduce to you the Director of Management and Information System, Mr. Florante Reyes. Good afternoon, Mr. Reyes. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much. Uh, good uh, Today, I have been tasked with the responsibility of presenting the MIS department and its role at the university. The MIS department is envisioned to provide effective management information system in order to facilitate, in order to enhance the quality of administrative research and academic activities of the university. Uh, our goal is to acquire, modify, and upgrade hardware equipment and software system to meet users' needs, ensure data integrity and security for all university information technology applications. Utilize information technology resources as a tool 
in promoting the university. Coaster in University and Industry Partnership through collaboration in different information technology organization. Find new and innovative ways to leverage data and technologies in order to encourage growth and expansion. For our services to faculty, personnel, and students is to provide online support and assistance, including but not limited to creating account for Google Workspace, student portal, Microsoft account, and also to reset forgotten password. Uh, for the offices, we attended to numerous department needs, including computer maintenance, troubleshooting, networking, uh, computer hardware replacement or upgrade. The, the MIS also is keeping our LCUP domain website up to date in coordination with the various departments. Also to facilitate the preparation of necessary IT infrastructure needed for university hosting activities. Google Workspace for Education, the official learning management system of the university, is also one of the uh, infrastructure of the uh, university. School Automate is the school management system used by the institution. It includes portal specifically for faculty, parents, and students. We also have Fortinet Firewall Appliance, a network security device that prevents unauthorized database access and block malicious website and malware. The university also maintains eight PLDT fiber internet subscription with speed ranging from 200 Mbps to 1 GB. And in collaboration with the smart communication, the Katmon campus smart Wi-Fi was upgraded and reactivated to provide free internet access to student and university personnel. We also have six computer laboratories in which students are pro provided with access to the most up-to-date technology and where computer services are offered. We also have the Microsoft 365A1 free license that have been activated for the LCUP domain, allowing our personnel and students to access online the most recent Microsoft application. I'm sure you're all familiar with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, Teams, and etc. The uh, university also subscribed to the license, different license software, the Microsoft 365 A3, which is uh, different from A1, which is free. This one is for uh, uh, with subscription. And also subscribe to Adobe software, Photoshop, Acrobat, and others. The, the university also encouraged the use of legal and licensed software to protect intellectual property rights of the everyone. How to access how to access the Google Workspace. In your browser, you have to go to accountsgoogle.com. And also for School Automate, you have to type in, in your browser, lcup.schoolautomate.com. And also to access Microsoft 365, you have to type office.com. Uh, when you sign into Google Workspace, this is what uh, you can get. We have the you have the Gmail, which is the email services or email client, the Google Meet, the video conferencing services, Google Classroom, the learning platform for sharing files between teachers and students. Uh, you, you have the Google Docs to create and collaborate on online documents. Next is Google Sheet a web-based application that enables users to create and update, modify spreadsheet, and also share them. 
Google Slide, if you want to create presentation, and Google Drive, the cloud-based file storage. Also in Microsoft, when you log into Microsoft 365, you can access the most recent Microsoft application, the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, etc. But remember, this is online. You, have, you must have an internet access to be able to access or use the web application. To access the student portal, you have to type in the lcupschoolautomate.com in your browser. Or you can visit the LCUP website and click the student portal link. And select and uh, click uh, parents and students menu. When you initially log in, use your student ID as your username and password, including the DAS for your student ID and username and password, I mean. Click the login button uh, and I mean, create your own login ID and password by following the on-screen instruction, LCUP, is always the prefix of your login ID. Login nagsisimula yung login ID natin sa student portal sa LCUP. You may use LCUP dot, your uh, name, or LCUP das, your nickname, and click save. Then again, you have to log in. This time, you will use the newly created ID and your password. And what do you have? What, what do we have in your uh, account page? This is the look of your account page when you log into the student portal. You can explore different menu. For example, the enrollment to view your subject, schedule, and registration. Student account to view ledger details and monthly or periodic dues. Your academic performance to update your, your personal information to update or change password and to view the library records and available books and also to evaluate your professor. Here are some uh, useful links that you can use to request for account resetting if you forgot your password. Application for Google Workspace account, if you don't have one, you can uh, request for, or you can fill up this form. And also application for Microsoft Office account, you will have this link. And a few reminders how to protect your account. Based on the image you see on your screen, create strong password. Do not use 123 or your birthday. Use a lowercase, a combination of lowercase and uppercase and uh, special character. I'm sure all of you already know this one, but to reiterate, para lang ma-remind kayo, uh, create strong password. And don't share your password, even in your, sa uh, kaibigan nyo, sa magulang nyo, or sa friends nyo, do not share password. And use different password for different application. If you have uh, Facebook, TikTok, use different password for it. And also, don't be too public in social media. Wag yung post ng post kung ano-ano, kung nasaan na kayo, kung wala kayo sa bahay. Mahirap yun. Also, use two-factor authentication. Usually, sa mga banko, pagka nag-login kayo, they are using this one, uh, one-time password. Another security to log into your account. Another thing, clean your friends list. Wala naman siguro sa atin na maraming uh, 3,000 or 1,000 na friends na, ka, na lahat sila ay kakilala nyo. And don't open suspicious link. 
suspicious link. Sabi nga sa GMA, think before you click. And also, be careful what you click for. And lastly, back up your data files. Gone are those days that you are using your USB or external drive to back up your files. We have the cloud storage to use as your backup. Uh, as your backup, we have the Google Drive. And also, if you subscribe to Microsoft 365, you have OneDrive. You don't need to uh, bring USB or uh, external hard drive to back up your files. And you can access your backup anywhere when there is an internet. Data, how to protect your data will be discussed by the next, uh, de in details by our next speaker. And lastly, this is our team. Uh, your Sully, Florante Reyes, the director. And we have Mr. Luigi Gamad, our computer technician. Mr. Ivan Madayag, our computer laboratory technician. And to contact us, if you have any question, uh, inquiry, you can email us at mis at lcup.edu.ph or mis at email.lcup.edu.ph. Once again, thank you and welcome to LCUP. Thank you, Dimpo, Mr. Reyes, for making the student understand and be familiar with the service that the MIS or Management Information System offers to our students, such as Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, space, and so much more, which is very helpful for us during our online classes. Hindi tayo makaka-attend sa ating online classes without the help of MIS and as well as hindi tayo makapag-visit sa ating student portal. So as of the moment, we still have four university services to discuss this afternoon. And let us not keep our other speakers wait any longer. To discuss about the data privacy in our university, I would like to introduce to you the Director of Data Privacy Office. We have Mr. Joseph Emmanuel Guevara. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. So I'm here this afternoon to present to you our department, the Data Privacy Office. So to start, so I'm Sir Joseph Guevara. So I'm the Data Privacy Officer of La Cosa Nacion University of Philippines. So for this afternoon, I'll be talking about the following. So the Data Privacy Office, the Data Privacy Act of 2012, and then your personal data, and then the LCP privacy policy, and then uh, threats to data privacy and protecting your data privacy. So to start, so the Data Privacy Office is in charge of compliance with the National Privacy Commission. And then also, of course, with the Data Privacy Act of 2012. And then we also handle the cultivation of privacy awareness within our students and employees to make sure that everyone's familiar with the threats yeah? and then how we can comply with the uh, Data Privacy Act. And then, of course, we also handle uh, complaints from both uh, personnel and students with regards to their uh, data privacy. So everyone's familiar naman with this type of text, right? So nakareceive na siguro kayo ng mga ganyan. So these are types of phishing texts or mga phishing scams. So it's designed to uh, steal information or money from us. So if you receive these kinds of text, so ignore nyo na lang, i-block nyo na lang siya. Then ngayon nga, di ba, mas bago, nakalagay na yung pangalan. So baka isipin natin, since may pangalan, so legitimate siya. So, so it's hindi siya legitimate. So scam lang din siya. So may na nakawin lang din yung information natin or yung pera natin. And then, familiar din kayo dito sa news last uh, July. So, ginagamit yung pictures ng mga bata to sell mga malicious images, pictures of other children. So, yun yung mga uh, dangers of posting in social media. Then, yan, nakita nyo din siguro to if you follow Michael V. So may nagperpetent na si Michael B. So may poser siya. So baka akala nyo kasi may 
kulay blue na check si Michael Villon. So, hindi, yun yung profile picture niya. So, misa kasi na associate na natin yung kulay blue na check sa legitimacy ng isang profile or yung tao or yung user. So, be very careful pag nag, nakakita kayo ng ganyan or nakareceive kayo ng message. Then, misan kahit mga simple post lang, katulad yan, hinihingi yung apelido ng mother mo or father mo. Diba? Kasi yung mga information na yan, uh, ginagamit natin yan sometimes to register sa bank, yan, sa mga, pa ba, misan sa school, di ba? So, nilalagay yan, yung mga maiden name ng mother natin. So, be very careful kapag nag-share kayo ng ganyan. So, iwasan na natin. And then, so to combat those types of threats, so na-design yung Data Privacy Act of 2012. So, 10 years na siya, last month, to August. So, it ensures that our data privacy is protected. Then, it regulates the processing of our information. And then, it ensures them that the Philippines is compliant with the international standards when it comes to data privacy. So, yun yung nakalagay doon sa batas natin. So here are the key DPA actors na involved sa, yan, sa pag-protect ng ating data privacy or sa pag-process na rin. So first, we have the National Privacy Commission. So it's the independent body mandated to implement the Data Privacy Act. And then we also have the data subjects or data subjects. So the data subjects are us, all of us. Yan. So tayo yung nagbibigay ng information diba, that is being processed sa mga organization or sa mga companies or sa mga websites. Then, sa kanino ba natin binibigyan information natin? So, we give them to, most of the time, mga personal information controllers. Yan, sila mga organizations, mga tao, mga companies. Yan. Again, websites that collects and process our information or personal data. And then sometimes, pag hindi nila pwede, hindi sila yung nagpa-process, pinoforward nila sa other companies or organizations. So, we call them personal information processor. So, third party sila or naka-outsource. Okay. So, in your four key DPA actors. And then, under the Data Privacy Act of 2012, so we have eight fundamental data subject rights. So, ito yung first six. So, your first one is right to information. So, sa right to information, uh, sinasabi yan, as data subjects, so we have the right to be informed what is being collected from us and then how will it be processed. And then, see the magpa-process, gano'ng katagal gagamitin, yung mga gano'n. So, yung kailangan ini-inform tayo, di ba? Kaya nga, every time you sign up sa isang website or nagbigay, bago kayo, before you give your personal data to a, a website company, meron sila dapat data uh, privacy policy o privacy notice or consent form. So, to inform us, yun yung kasi yung way kung paano nag-inform yung data subject. Then, of course, we have right to access. So, we have access or reasonable access to our information na binigay natin sa isang PIC or sa PIP. So, pwede tayo mag-request na makita natin yun or bigyan tayo ng copy. Then, we also have the right to object. So, again, as stated doon sa privacy policy, sa consent form, sa privacy notice. So, you can object kung sa tingin nyo ayaw nyo nung, ayaw nyo nung processing na gagawin doon sa information nyo o sa personal data nyo. Or ganyan, may nabago. So, pwede kayo mag-object. Then, you also have the right to erasure or blocking. Again, you have reasonable, uh, kung may reasonable kayo, o may dahilan kayo na reasonable naman, legitimate, so pwede nyo ipabura yung information nyo na binigay kung hindi na kailangan. Then we also have a right to data portability. So yan, common sa school yan, di ba? We can transfer our information, yung credentials nyo, to other schools kung ilipat na kayo or mag-aaral na kayo sa ibang eskwelahan. So, pwede kayo humingi. So, hindi na naman siya sa school applicable sa iba ding company or organizations. Then, you also have the right to rectify. So, if any information about you is incorrect, uh, hindi na updated, na bago na, yan, nagpakasal ka na, so you have the right to rectify that information, to update it, to make it, to make sure that it is accurate. And then, kung yung first six rights na yon sa tingin nyo, na violate, hindi na bigay sa inyo, so, you have the right to file a complaint sa National Privacy Commission or kahit na sa organization. Later, papakita ko sa inyo yung link kung saan kayo pwede mag-file na complaint sa, sa school. Then, upon investigation ng National Privacy Commission, kung sa tingin nila, na-violate nga yung rights nyo, hindi na bigay, 
So you have the right to damage. So pwede kayong mabayaran. As data subjects. Yeah. So ano ba yung mga personal data natin? So when we say personal data, so these are information that can identify us as an individual. So ano ba yung mga naka-identify sa atin? So typically itong mga to. Pero madami pang iba. Hindi lang ito. So we have two categories of personal data. So we have personal information and sensitive personal information. So sa personal information, uh, we have yan, yung mga common name, address, contact information, birth date, birthplace, gender, uh, citizenship, and then uh, location at a particular time. So yun yung mga common na personal data natin. And then for sensitive personal information, so we have yan, yung race, ethnic origin, marital status, uh, age, health, education, bank information, uh, information reflecting the behavior or preference of an individual. So, yun yung mga sensitive person information. Kasi kadalasan ginagamit dyan uh, for racism, bullying, yan, discrimination, marketing. Yung mga kiniklik nyo sa internet, so nagagamit dyan para to market uh, products. Diba? Pag nagbibisit kayo sa mga websites, may mga advertisements na pinapakita doon. So, doon kasi binabase yun. Also, uh, if you visit our university website, so you can uh, read there the our LCP privacy policy. So, nandun siya sa pinakababa. So, hanapin nyo lang yung data privacy policy. So, makikita nyo doon how your data is being used, how is it being processed. So, yeah, may for personnel, may for parents, guardians, and students. So, nakalagay lang naman ako saan mga ginagamit yung personal information. And kanina siya sinishare. And then, uh, we have different threats to data privacy. So, ito yung mga common that we should be aware of. And so, first, we have the social engineering. So, ito, di ba? As, ang example niyan nga is number one is yung phishing. Yan, through text, through email, through calls, mga direct message private message na nare-receive natin. So, ayun yung design niya to steal our data, our information, our kahit pera. Kasama dyan. Then, we also have mga unpatched software and applications. Yan, mga malicious software, mga viruses, worms. Yan. Then, of course, uh, poor password management. So, yan yung mga threats. Pagka uh, poor yung password mo, di ba madaling mahak, madaling mahulaan. Then, of course, uh, for poor physical safeguards. Yan. So, again, ulitin lang natin. So, watch out for the following. Yan. If you have received these kinds of text, mga unexpected job offers, yan, with too good to be true salaries, napakadami yan ngayon. Kung ano-anong companies yung nag-text na hindi naman totoo. So, uh, Yan. Then, mga unsolicited loan ng mga investment offers. Yan. Mga compromised bank or credit card account. So, mag-ingat kayo kapag nakareceive kayo nun. Then, tignan nyo lagi. Mayroon ba mga suspicious link? Yan. Yung pan text is urgent. Yan. O kaya, mayroon ba mga threats katulad nito? Ibang block daw yung account mo if you do not uh, comply, if you don't update your information. So, hindi po siya totoo. So, mga phishing scam po siya designed to steal our information. And then, kung sa email naman, almost ganun din. So, tignan nyo mabuti. Uh, yung email address ba na ginamit is official or baka unofficial siya, katulad nito. Hindi siya talaga nung galing sa company. Or baka inimitate lang ng konti yung email address. And then, yung greetings, generic ba? Yan, nakalagay lang, dear valid customer. But there, is, there are instances na nakalagay talaga yung pangalan natin kahit phishing attempt pa rin siya, o phishing email. So, mag-ingat pa rin tayo kahit nakalagay yung pangalan natin. And then, yan. There are other spelling errors. Yan. Again, urgency, may threat. Then, may suspiciously. So, kaya naman, mga unsolicited attachments. So, baka virus pala yun. Pag, and then, yung sa link naman, when you click it, na-i-inform na, ka sila na active yung email address na yon pag clinic natin. And then, at the same time, it will... It can or it may download a malicious software sa computer natin or it may open a link or a website that looks legitimate na natin sa banko or sa website na ginagamit natin. 
So, hinihingi information natin kung wari. So, be very careful. Then, ayan. For example, kung galing sa LCUP email, di ba? Ito dapat yung nasa dulo. Yung at email.lcup.edu.ph. So, tignan nyo mabuti. Yan kasi yung domain no school natin. Ano sa email. And, and then, of course, a phone. May mga applications tayong ginagamit. So, check your app permissions kung ano ba yung accessible nila sa phone natin. So, for example, this one is for Facebook. So, is it accessible ba sa kanya yung calendar, yung camera, yung contacts, or in this case, yung contacts, yung location, and then yung phone is accessible. It means it, Facebook can access your contacts. Kung ano ba yung content nung meron to sa phone book mo sa contacts natin. And then yung location mo, nakikita ng Facebook kung nasan ka. Then yung phone mo, yung mga tumatawag sa'yo or mga nag-receive mo calls o tinatawagan mo, nakikita nila. So, tignan nyo kung ano yung mga na-access ng isang application sa cellphone natin. So, i-don't allow nyo na lang kung sa tingin nyo hindi naman dapat. Kasi pwede na naman steal yung information na nasa phone natin. Yan. And then how can uh, how you can protect your data privacy? So aside from those mga na una, to na bangit na kaya niya ni ng director ng MIS. So of course create strong passwords. So very important kasi na strong yung password. Mapag hindi yung pangalan ng aso, katulad niya ng bangit kanina. Yan pangalan ng anak, birthday, one two three, password one two three, mga ganon. So kailangan yung alpha numeric siya. Then use uh, symbols, mga small and upper case letters. Then, of course, don't reuse passwords. In case there is a data breach to sa isang application or sa isang website, for example, sa banko or sa Facebook, nagkaroon ng data breach, if you're using the same password to sa banko mo, sa Gcash mo, o sa other services pala ginagamit mo, so na-expose na rin yun. So kaya dapat iba-iba yung password natin for every service na ginagamit natin. Then, of course, never share your password, your PIN, or your code. But PIN na nare-receive natin kapag we have uh, multi-factor authentication o kaya naman yung code ng credit card o ng debit card. So, wag na wag nyo i-share. Kahit na nagsasabi sa banko sila or sa uh, kung saan man silang company. So, wag na wag nyo i-share. Then, change your password regularly. Hindi natin alam kasi minsan may data breach pero hindi pa nire-release agad yung uh, data na nanakaw nila. Misan, after one year pa nare-release. So, kung hindi ka naman nagpapalit regularly, so, vulnerable ka pa rin. Or kapag ka nagkaroon ng data breach, so, magpalit ka na agad. And again, use two-factor or multi-factor authentication. So, just in case, again, magkaroon ng data breach, may expose yung password mo, username and password, may second layer of defense ka pa to your account. So, hindi pa siya basta-basta ma-access. Okay? And then, beware of phishing. Nabanggit natin kanina. Don't click suspicious links and then clean up your Facebook. Yung friends mo, yung mga third-party apps. Ano pa ba? Yung mga groups na sinalihan mo dati na hindi naman na-active kasi visible yun sa ibang tao kung ano mga information yung mayroon ka doon. Then sa Facebook friends mo, baka mamaya hindi na pala yun yung kaibigan mo. Nanakaw na pala yung account sa Facebook. Mag-PM sa'yo, nakihingi ng pera. Ibigyan mo naman kasi akala mo, kakilala mo. So, be very careful. Then, again, don't be too public, especially in social media. Kasi nakikita nga na ibang tao kung ano yung mga pinupost natin. Baka mamaya, it might endanger us. And then, uh, read the privacy policy or the website or the company, no PIC, no PIP, para inform tayo kung saan nila gagamitin yung data natin. Then again, yeah, check your app permissions, keep your software up to date. So when you update your software, so na-update din yung mga vulnerabilities niya, yung mga threats na pinoprotektahan tayo. So hindi kayo basta-basta mabibiktima ng mga threats na nabangit natin kanina. Then lock your device, just in case manakaw or maiwan nyo kung saan. So hindi siya basta-basta ma-open na kung sino-sino. Then again, back up your data. Para kahit masira yung device nyo, computer nyo, laptop nyo, yung hard drive nyo. So may copy ka pa rin. Madali mo mariretrieve or marirecover yung data mo. Then yung last, so pass this on to your friends, your family. 
para protected din sila. Kasi kahit protected tayo, kung sila hindi protected, so pwede pa din tayo maging victim to them. Okay? So that's my presentation. So thank you very much. So if you have any data privacy complaints, so you can send it here. So bit.ly slash dpo underscore complaint. Or you have any questions, so you can email me at dpo at email.lcp.edu.ph. So thank you very much. So thank you, Paul, Mr. Guevara, for that talk, for making us aware about posters, phishing texts, and scams, which are very relevant today. These days, napakadaming kumakalat na scam texts, which includes our names and links, kung saan nagperpetend silang online banking app and other companies. So thank you again, Mr. Guevara, for reminding us to ignore those messages as well as discussing our eight rights as data subject. Again, yung sinabi ni Sir, we have the right to information, access, object, erasure, blocking, rectify, data portability, complaint, and ask for damages. So, for our next speaker, he will tackle about community extension. And I am very sure that the old students of LCUP are very familiar with the partnered community of our university where our students participated in different activities or programs that will benefit the said community. And to give more knowledge about community extension, I would like to welcome the Director of Extension Program, Mr. Rudy Angelo Juan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ms. Kiana. Thank you very much. The office of the Vice President is the one administering the Community Extension or the Madarita Barcelona Outreach Program. It is headed by our very own sister Mary Sheba O Principe, OSA, and with me assisting in the supervision of our programs is Miss Joey and De La Cruz. Earlier, Sister Mary Sheba presented to you the LCUP core values. And the pillar that I'm suggesting for your education here in LCUP is learning to reach out. Included in this core values of our university are the Filipino concepts of kabaitan, paglingap, pagtulong, Malasakit, pagmamahal. Hopefully, with our uh, office, we can help you improve your learning in this university as we manage social orientation and community extension activities in providing you sustainable outreach programs according to your learning by instruction and research for you to be able to develop yourselves as an authentic Catholic and Filipino prophetic witnesses and transformational leaders and stewards of a, of a sustainable and resilient communities and its environment. What are our concerns? in our society. The following uh, areas of concern will be education, health, environment, economic, social, political, and spiritual. In doing so, here are the following programs we are providing you. First, Lontiang Pinas ni Santa Monica. Our goal, to care for the lives in the environment and restore, conserve, nurture, and protect the resources of the earth. Simply to say, clean earth. For this year, we are now opening, we will be opening the Year 2 of our Clean Earth Project 2031. Every September 8, we are celebrating in, uh, in solidarity with the Laudato Si Season of Creation. For this year, the theme is Listen to the Voice of Creation and 
for our university, our team will be keep away from toxics and use water wisely. Next program is Medicalinga Misa Nicolás de Tolentino. Our goal to assist in saving lives through health instructions and to enhance good lifestyles against diseases. Simply to say, to shield. Lipat Kaalama ni Santo Tomas de Villanova. Our goal to share livelihood technologies, ideas, funds for total progress. Simply to say, leap progress. Our program, Gabay Pamayana ni Madre Rita, has the goal to help in the recovery and in bridging the gap and make people united through integrative leadership and promote sustainable development and resiliency in the times of crisis due to climate change. Abacada ni Venerable Consuelo. Our goal is to share ideas and techniques in teaching math and English to accelerate progressive understanding among pupils and youth. We have the program Classroom sa Barangay ni Santa Rita de Casia. Here, our goal is to share technologies for early education of children and reinforce kids' learning. La Mesa de Sor Consuelo. Our goal is pagkain at gabay bilang handog sa isa o higit pa ng mga pamilyang nangangailangan. So dito say, paghain. Agapayan ng Jerusalem, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. What we will read in Acts chapter 4, verse 32 is, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. Here our goal is, Pag-agapay, to provide assistance through generous act of giving and pay it forward principle. Hawakamay ni San Ezequiel Moreno. Our goal is to console people in times of crisis due to calamities or disasters. Simply, we can say to cope. Share a joy with Sor Teresa de Jesus. Our goal is to share the love of Jesus, especially on Yuletide season. Duktong buhay ni San Lorenzo Ruiz. Here our goal is to coordinate with the Philippine Red Cross for donation of blood. We have also program for indigenous people, OFW families, and other social welfare services. Our goal is paglinga, which means to promote and give social welfare services, safeguard the lives of indigenous groups, and support OFW families to advance progress and welfare. If we will look at our programs in this particular framework, we will discover the connection of our instruction, research, and outreach programs in building a Catholic Augustinian Marian communities. For this year, we also advocating for the team presented by the Social Pastoral Ministry 
in the Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation Mother House. It says, Consolating them as a prophetic and servant leader, promoting culture of charity, truth, and hope, inspired by the Church's synodality in the Devukad world. What do we mean by the Vukad world? There is deception, vulnerabilities, uncertainties, complexities, adversity, adversities, disturbances, or diversities. So, being an L, a consolation, we are helping you to develop your self, your mind, seeking the truth. We are helping you to develop your heart, to live in God's love, and making you understand the purpose of willingness to serve by making your hands open for the people who are in need. So we are here to promote the culture of service. Let us remember that volunteerism connotes or denotes the idea about the work done by those people without expectation of claim to any material or financial compensation. Like Jesus Christ, let us learn to serve and not to be served. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you, Paul, Mr. Wang, for sharing the helpful programs of Community Extension. So I'm going to share my experience regarding Community Extension. So last year when I was a third-year student, ang Community Extension ng course namin, which is AB Communication Arts, is to educate or held a webinar sa grade 5 students of City of Malolos Integrated School, Katmon, regarding voters' education. So it is a very wonderful experience kasi... We can educate the younger generation regarding the importance of your voice and your vote. When I was first year student, ang community extension namin that time is pumunta kami sa Mother Rita Homes, pumunta kami sa kanilang bahay, kinausap namin sila, kinamusta namin kung paano sila namumuhay, anong ginagawa nila sa pang araw araw And in that way, we are serving the people and natututo kami at natututo rin sila. So, community extension is one of the best experience when you study here in LCDP. So, moving on, we are now almost at the end of our orientation. But it doesn't mean that you will no longer participate Participate with us. Hindi porket matatapos na ating orientation ay hindi na kayo makikinig. So, to confirm na nandito ba kayo at nakikinig sa amin, Maari ba kayong mag-comment ng heart emoji sa ating comment section? So, I can see if nagpa-participate pa kayo. Can you comment a heart emoji? May mga comments na ba? Ayan, okay. I see some students who are still with us today. So, thank you so much for your cooperation. So, for our next speaker... He will discuss the research publications and linkages. So without further ado, let us all welcome and give a virtual round of applause the Vice President of Research Publication and Linkages, Dr. Mark Ray Santos. Good afternoon, Paul. Yes, good afternoon. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, Paul. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. I would like to greet everybody, especially the college students. And uh, the task that I'm given this afternoon is to share with you, to give you a brief orientation about research in the university. So let me now uh, start sharing my presentation.
Right. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes, po, sir. All right. So thank you very much. Sorry for the little technical delay in that. So today is the research orientation. So I would like to begin by presenting to you the, the reason why we have this office, the, the Office of the Research Publications and Linkages, specifically the, the research office. So it says here that La Consolación University of Philippines adheres to the mandate of the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, placing the primacy of research and innovation among higher education institutions, such as LCUP. The experience of the pandemic fuels the global population in the academy to adapt to change. Ang dami natin pinagdaan ng mga changes, hindi ba? And therefore, as a higher education institution, we should be able to adapt and be able to adjust uh, do sa mga changes na na-encounter natin due to the pandemic. Uh, to restructure the curriculum and instruction and to acquire relevant skills through aligned scholarly works and technological innovations. And in order for us to, to achieve that, you know, it's, it's supposed to be achieved through research. Now, now uh, I am tasked now to present to you, ano ba yung mga services? What services do we offer in the office? So our office is the Office of the Vice President for Research, Publications, and Linkages. So I would like first you to meet the members of the team. Yours truly is Dr. Mark Ray Santos. I am the Vice President for Research, Publications, and Linkages. With me, supposedly, are four other members of the team. But right now, we are in the uh, we are in the recruitment process. No? We are in the process of uh, of hiring a new research officer, which will be one of the major units of the office. But right now, uh, in the vacancy of the position, I'm the one fulfilling the responsibility of a research officer. So maybe by next week, we shall be having our new research officer. I have also with me my publications officer in the name of Ms. Villa Galman. So all uh, matters related to publication, like the news, the institutional newsletters, uh, the research journals, everything that relates to publication, it's uh, Ms. Villa Galman who's in charge of that. I also have my linkages officer in the person of Ms. Kathy Raimundo. So Ms. Kathy is the one that facilitates collaboration and forges partnership with other organizations and institutions, as well as uh, she takes the responsibility of admitting and uh, processes, uh, requirements, and documents of our foreign students. Now, I also have my secretary in the office, and I have Ms. Ronald Cruz, who works and manages the daily operations, administrative operations of the office. So these are the members of the OVP RPL team. So just in case you'll meet them in the campus, just in case you'll be coming into the university, you can give them a wave and say hi, so that at least you know that these are the people in the office. Now, so what's the vision of the office? It says here that the research, publications, and linkages office envisions itself to become a center for research excellence through quality and publishable researches and creative works. Yeah, so we are not just focusing on research, but also on other forms of academic requirements, such as creative works. It is committed to the delivery of relevant and operative research and creative works productivity in the light of Catholic and Augustinian spirituality. Of course, that's our identity. And remember, religion is the core of our curriculum. And so when we are to produce research and creative works, it has to be within the context of Catholic and Augustinian spirituality. It also envisions to become a participant in the formation and development of leaders imbued with high standards of social responsibility. So that's our dream, that's our vision. Now, in order for us to achieve our vision, we have this, we have our mission. The research publications and linkages office aims to the following. First, enhance the research training program in the university. Second, increase the number of faculty members, personnel, and even students with research in a broad range of discipline. So we don't just encourage our staff to write research, conduct and write research, but also our students. Because remember, research is one of the quadrifocal uh, pillars of higher education institutions. 
So it's not just instruction. When you have your university experience, does not just include instruction, but also you have research, you have extension, and you have productivity. You know? So it, it helps you develop, the, to come up with the holistic development of the person. Also, uh, our mission is to intensify internationally competitive research force. So that means our standard and quality of research is not only that of the Philippines, but of international standards as well. Are also one part of our mission also is to build up commissions and funded researches from funding agencies like the OST and the Commission on Higher Education, to name a few. Now we also uh, aim to improve the number of local and international publication and presentation. Remember that the, the last and the final uh, phase in our research process is the, in the dissemination of research. So we don't just conduct and write research just to put them on the shelf, no? just to gather dust, but for the research to be made use and to be disseminated and to be shared to other people. We also aim to innovate program planning, teaching, and research activities in the university. And finally, to be in partnership with different industries, institutions, and other business stakeholders. But our mission would be our goals. So why were those our mission? Because these are our goals. Part of our goal is to provide disciplinary research that is Catholic and Augustinian in character and open to international standard of quality and excellence. Second, to actively engage our faculty, other personnel, and students into research activities. Third, to cater development of communities through the effective utilization of our research outputs. And lastly, to create strong links between and among different universities, industry partners, stakeholders, and possibly other funding agencies. Now, we have also our core values in the office, in the office of the uh, research publications and linkages. And you will notice that our four core values basically are values, attitudes uh, of a researcher. Because we would like to believe that in order for you to be an effective researcher, you should be, have, you should be having these values. First, we have here passion. You need to be passionate with, with whatever you're doing. Dapat Alam mo yung ginagawa mo. At the same time, gusto mo. Diba? Kasi if you lose the motivation, if you're not passionate with what you're doing, kasi you'll get bored. Or you won't end up finishing what you have started kasi you don't have the passion in there. No? So as a researcher, you have to be passionate. Second to that, you have to be creative. No? So we, it doesn't mean na uh, meron tayong sinusunod na, for example, na template or format in conducting research, eh doon lang tayo iikot. No? So we need to be creative. We need to be innovative. We need to know how to think outside of the box. You know? Ang mga research natin, hindi yung replication lang ng mga lagi exist na mga research. Ang mga research natin, hindi yung kung ano lang yung alam natin research. We need to keep ourselves updated. We need to be creative. We need to be innovative. Another core value would be the desire for knowledge. Diba? Similar to our patron saint, St. Augustine, alam natin yung continuous search for truth. Na meron tayo, there's, there's, there's a thirst kasi that needs to be quenched. No, para bang iuhaw and uhaw ka. Kasi inom ka ng malabig na tubig, kasi mawawala talaga yung pagkauhaw na yun. Dapat di mawala sa atin yun. As a researcher, kailangan there should always be that desire for knowledge. And lastly, we need to be resilient. No, resilience is a core value of a researcher. Bakit? Kasi yung iba, pagka nakaka-encounter na ng mga ng mga difficulties, no? nakaka-encounter na ng mga problem while conducting a research, the tendency is, hindi nila natatapos. The tendency is, hindi na nila itutuloy. Why? Because they're not resilient enough to realize na mahalaga, may maiaambag ito pa natapos natin itong study na ito. Mayroon maiko-contribute ito. It definitely has some feeling if you'll be able to finish what you have started. No? In order for you to do that, you have to be resilient. You have to be pliant as a bamboo, sabi nga ni Dr. Rizal. Di ba? So, kilala tayo mga Pilipino bilang mga resilient. Di ba? Sabi nga nila, kahit bumabag yun na o na na disgrasya na o tilangay na ng baha mga bahay natin, nakukuha po natin yung biti kasi alam natin after this, makakabangon pa rin tayo kasi we never lose hope. And aside from that, we need to be because we are resilient. Alright? So these are the core values. As a researcher, as a college student, when you are to write your research, to conduct your research, you need to be passionate about it. You need to be creative and you should think outside of the box. You need to have this continuous desire for knowledge and you have to be resilient. Do not forget that. So, hindi lang sa aming core value ito. Kundi this is a core value of any student or any researcher in the university.
Now, so what are the different services that we offer in our research office? You know? First, we do review and evaluation of research proposals because our research process starts by the submission of a proposal in the office. Then we do review of those proposals being submitted to us and we do evaluation. You know? Then we also do review and evaluation of the completed research. Because you begin with a proposal, then the proposal, when approved, is subjected to research ethics committee for ethical review. Then you try, to, you will start gathering the data. And upon completion of the research, we also offer review and evaluation of completed research. We also prepare and conduct institutional research colloquium. Say when research are completed, in order before we allow uh, researches that emanated in the university to be presented and published outside of the institution we require them with two things. Either they present their paper in an institutional research colloquium or they subject their paper into a double-blinded peer review by our pool of experts in research. Also, we organize and conduct international research conferences. So I'm very much proud to let you know that, that every year we have this, no? in partnership with Globus Education and Research Association or JERA, which is an international publication company under Globus Publication is our is one of our partner institution wherein it allows us to to organize and to host an international research conference the most recent was done in uh, the last uh, days of April April 29 and 30 and it is a very successful international conference which means we provide opportunity for our students even high school and even the college students most especially the graduate school students, to participate in research presentation and publication in the international setup or the international stage, right? So what kind of experience is this? We, we allow and we provide avenue for our students to experience international conferences in research. That's, that's a very good opportunity. And also, like... Uh, this is an early advertisement. By December, we shall be holding an ICRI or International Conference for Interdisciplinary Research and Innovations. It's going to be held during the celebration of the University Week. And the office, our office, is also the one organizing and the one conducting that in collaboration with other departments, such as the Graduate School Office. We also offer assistance in improving the overall quality of research in the university. So upon submitting to us proposals or completed research, we provide comments, feedback to help you improve the total quality of your research. Also, the different departments notice that uh, there will come a time this, this semester that I'll be uh, meeting the maybe the graduating students, those who are on their research subject, to be giving them a, res a separate research orientation so that I can get them acquainted with the actual format of the research in our university because our intention is to standardize the quality and the format of research in the university. So that's part of the meeting that I'll be conducting with the different uh, colleges or departments in the university. So these are the different services in terms of research uh, of our office. So notice that when you are to write your research, do not forget that you are supposed to follow a certain agenda where you will be getting the idea as to where the research is supposed to be uh, based on. Remember, it's essential the research must be aligned with either a global or a local agenda. An example to this would be the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, or maybe the DOST and RCP or the National Research Council of the Philippines research agenda. And we have our very own agenda. So this is an example of a research agenda wherein there are 70 sustainable goals of the United Nations. This is just to cite. Uh, and this is a basis of, and, and it gives us idea as to where our research could be based and what could be a basis why we wish to pursue because it's it's addressing a certain international goal of uh, sustaining uh, the development of the world. Another would be the DOSD or Department of Science and Technology National Research Council Research Agenda, wherein the 17 United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals have been trimmed down into six. Because this time, um, the focus nila is on the national level. Yeah? So it could be that basis. And also, LCUP has created its own research agenda. 
So when you are about to conduct and write your research no, in your respective courses as an academic requirement, this can be presented to you because each of the different colleges or offices or departments have their own research agenda. And so when we formulated the university research agenda for LCUP, we were able to identify nine components or nine sub-themes no, as our agenda, which Notice that in our framework, at the middle is still the division, mission, and goals of the university. So upon identifying the research agenda for the different themes, we always put into consideration the vision, mission, and the goals of the university. Just to name the different themes, we have theme number one, emerging technologies. We have theme number two, sustainable environment. Theme number three, tourism, business, and social enterprise. Theme number four will be on innovative educational practices. Theme number five, health and quality of life, theme number six, faith and spirituality, theme number seven, arts, humanities, and society, theme number eight, quality institutional service delivery, and theme number nine, social justice and community development. So sabi ko kanina, if you are about to conduct and to write your research, your research teacher will present to you the department's specific research agenda na nag identify ng mga sample topics and questions that you can choose from, no? Para talagang ang sigurado tayo ang mga research yung sulat nyo ay aligned doon sa mga courses ng department ninyo. Alright? So, merong sariling mga uh, research agenda ang bawat department, which is anchored also in this nine uh, sub-themes of the LCUP research agenda. Now, let me just discuss to you para you'll have an idea of what is uh, the research format in LCUP. Kasi most of the other universities right now, they're still using the five-chapter research format. But in LCUP, sabi ko sa inyo kanina, we wish to establish a standard for LCUP. We're only following the four-chapter format. And in that four-chapter, yung, yung sa ibang university na nakahiwalay for chapter two, yung review of related literature, we have combined that in chapter one. No? So notice that in our chapter one, ang contents includes the introduction, the review of related literature, the significance of the study, the theoretical and conceptual framework, the statement of the problem, hypothesis of the study for quantitative research, definition of terms, and scope and delimitation. Uh, now, for chapter two, this is where the methodology of the study is being discussed, where in other university formats, chapter three nila to, for certain this is our chapter two. The chapter two, methodology of the study includes the methods and techniques used, the respondents of the study, the instrument of the study, the data gathering procedure, the data processing and statistical treatment, and the ethical considerations. And for uh, capstone projects, yung mga nasa IT, you know, yung mga IT related, wherein they have capstone projects, may mga two additional contents for chapter two, which is the data case analysis and the proposed system architecture. Now, chapter three then will become now the presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. Ito na lang ngayon, sasagutin yung mga statement of the problem nyo, di ba? Dito niya i-reveal yung mga findings ng study. You will include also an analysis of those findings and further interpretation of the data. Diba? And in chapter 4, this is where you will summarize the findings that you presented in chapter 3. You will also identify the conclusions that you derived from the findings and the recommendations that you have derived from the conclusions. So, dapat meron proper alignment from the SOP to the findings, to the conclusion, to the recommendations. And then we have the references and appendices. Now, by the moment you reach yung research writing year na ninyo ano, dito sa university. Ito yung format na ginagamit namin. For any colloquium or, or for any international conferences, we follow yung IMRAD format. Diba? IMRAD stands for Introduction, Methodology, Results, and Discussion. So merong template na sinusunod kami dyan. No? And the template can be availed. Meron yung kasi this is a controlled template that we use in our office. No, dito sa research publication and linkages office. We can share this to you so that just in case you are interested to participate in any of our institutional colloquium or you have the intention of submitting uh, an abstract or a completed paper for presentation and publication later on when you underwent uh, review and evaluation already of your paper in our office, then you can make use of this form, no? which identifies the format that we require no, the submission of research in our office. This might look very small to you right now, 
but this basically just contain all of the basic requirements that we require for the publication, presentation, publication, and even in the institutional colloquium when they are presenting their research for comments, feedback from experts, from panel of experts. You know? So basically, that's the only content. Those are the only things that I wish to tell you. The reason why we are here, we have included research as part of your orientations because we would like to let you know that research you know, basically is a very significant and important part of your journey in the university. You know? Kasi we are not just any school. We are a university and you are in a higher education institution where research is a major component. You know? So inaasahan namin na may experience niya na magiging joyful experience and your part of your learn experience to conduct, you know, and write research so that eventually we'll see our students and see dami na namin estudyante that participated in our international conference where they have presented and even published. Imagine that. How good would that be if you can add in your portfolio as a college graduate that you were able to conduct research, write research, presented a research, and even published a research. So I just hope, I would like to welcome everybody, and I just hope that you will be enjoying your stay with us in the university and be a researcher later on. So thank you so much, and that would be all on my side. Well, thank you, Paul, Dr. Santos, for discussing the services that your office, which is the Research Publication Linkages Office, offers. And as a college student na may research, alam naman natin that we should follow the core values of being a researcher. Tulad ng sinabi ni Dr. Santos, we should be passionate, creative, have desire for knowledge and resilience. Kaya hindi rin tayo gagraduate kapag hindi natin naitapos at naigawa ng maayos ang ating research. So before I introduce our next speaker, I humbly ask you to answer the evaluation sheet that will be posted in the comment section below because it will act as your attendance this afternoon. So, hindi ka pag, so kapag hindi ka nakapag-answer ng ating evaluation sheet, edi hindi ka po, uh, parang hindi ka rin nakatin na ating orientation. And now, for the last but definitely not the least topic that need to be discussed today, to tackle about health and safety protocols in the new normal. We have the Director of Marketing and Promotions Offices, Mr. Ezekiel Rodriguez. Good afternoon po. Okay, so good afternoon. So at this point, allow me to share with you the protocols that we need to observe no, during face-to-face -face classes. Uh, I understand that there are certain courses or certain programs that will actually be having their progressive face-to-face -face classes no, for the first semester. And I also understand that there are um, most of you, no, most of the college students that we have right now will still be having their online modalities no, for the first semester. So para po sa kaalaman ng lahat at para po sa lahat ng mga mag-face-to-face -to -face classes, no, mga uh, exams, no face-to-face -face examinations and all. Ito po yung susundin nating uh, procedure, no. Ito po yung susundin nating provisions, no. Uh, at ito pong existing guidelines na ito, it is already being followed by pupils and students from the basic education department whom are currently having their face-to-face -face classes already. So so we are having our face-to-face -face now for, for, from nursery to senior high school. And they are already exercising this, uh, these guidelines. No? So always remember, dear students, that if you will be visiting the university, the no mask, no entry policy, thermal scanning, and alcohol disinfection will still be implemented. So tuloy-tuloy po yan. And the uh, students, guests, with a temperature reading of at least 37.5 degrees or above will not be allowed to enter the campus premises. So if you are not feeling well, kung kayo po ay merong hindi na magandang pakaramdam, uh, advisable na po muna na magstay at home, rest, at magpagaling po muna. Okay? Next. Students entering the campus must practice proper hand hygiene, health etiquette, and physical distancing. Now, these are measures under the minimum public health standard. So susundin po natin yan 
kahit po tayo ay uh, nasa loob or habang tayo ay nasa loob na ng university premises. Meron po tayong mga hand washing stations and alcohol disinfection uh, uh, dispensers na naka-situate sa iba't ibang uh, lugar sa university that we can make use of. Now, always remember, for students who will be having their face-to-face -face classes or face-to-face -face examinations, okay, kapag po kayo ay meron ng flu-like symptoms, no, if you have your flu-like symptoms or uh, COVID-like manifestations, no, ito po yung mataas na lagnat within the last 24 hours, kayo po ay uh, may pananakit ng ulo na medyo matagal na, no? Yan, yan po ay mga signs na kailangan nating tignan. Bukod doon, sore throat at uh, pangangati ng lalamunan, ayan, dry cough, fatigue, blocked or runny nose, difficulty of breathing, loss of taste, smell and hearing, diarrhea or stomach, uh, stomach pain, kung meron kayong vomiting, nausea, pag sinabing nausea ay yung feeling na nasusuka, aching muscles pananakit ng katawan o yung mga kasukasuan no yung joint pains no you should stay at home and otherwise kung papasok kayo na may mga ganito kayong symptoms uh, you will be denied entry to the campus premises so ito po ay kasama sa ating existing measures no to control no itong spread ng uh, covid-19 and other uh, contagious diseases so kung kayo naman po ay uh, wala namang karamdaman pero kayo po ay close contact ibig sabihin nakasama niyo sa bahay ng matagal no yung mga relatives kaibigan kakilala kaanak na sila ang merong COVID-19 like symptoms no within the last 24 to 48 hours yung mga nabanggit ko kanina no you are all advised to stay at home and if you will be having your classes you need to inform the health services unit for further evaluation, assessment, and management. Okay? Para alam ninyo kung ano yung gagawin. Now, sa lahat po ng mga estudyanteng papasok sa ating university, no, pupils, students, parents, and guests no, must accomplish the health declaration form either online or physical po yan, no? prior to going to school. No? Pupils, students, guests whom are experiencing or have been exposed to persons who are experiencing related symptoms are advised not to go to school. Lagi pong ganun ang ating panuntunan. Kasi uh, in the event na meron tayong classmate sa isang section, tayo po ay uh, may kaklasing nag-positive sa COVID-19, lahat po tayo ay ma-advise for isolation. Ano? So, importante po talaga para po sa uh, welfare ng ating mga kaklase, ng ating mga teachers, professors, ng ating sarili, kung tayo po ay meron ng symptoms at alam natin na tayo ay merong nararamdamang hindi maganda, uh, might as well advise your professors, your dean, na hindi mo na kayo mapapasok due to health reasons. Okay? Uh, you may contact the, the institutional COVID-19 hotline. So later on, I'm going to provide you with the contact numbers kung kayo po ay nakaka-experience ng symptoms related to COVID-19. So symptomatic students or students exposed to symptomatic individuals are advised not to go to school. Now, upon entry to the campus premises, no, yung pong usual na ginagawa, ano, Health and Safety Marshal shall facilitate the entry screening protocol. So, ibig sabihin, mag-aalcohol disinfection, kukuhanan kayo ng, temperatures, ng, ng temperature, and of course, you will accomplish, you should accomplish uh, honestly no, itong uh, online health declaration form natin. Next, walk-in students are required to strictly follow the foot markings. So, ganun pa man, uh, iniiwasan po natin ang... Uh, transmission, ang local transmission ng, uh, ng COVID-19. So, susunod po tayo sa ating mga labels, signages, at sa ating mga foot markings. Now, upon arriving at the assigned building, so halimbawa, 
uh, meron kayong schedule ng face-to-face class. No? Pagdating nyo po doon sa building na yon, kayo po ay nire-require na mag-execute ng hand washing procedure. So meron po tayong mga lavatories doon kung saan po pwede po kayong maghugas ng kamay. Or you may actually disinfect your hands using our alcohol-based sanitizer. Now, upon entry to the classroom, students should strictly stay within the assigned bubble or personal safe zone. So, ibig pong sabihin, kung ano po yung assigned uh, seat ninyo, dun lang po tayo uupo. I understand that humans are social beings no, and we need to socialize with other individuals. But because of our stringent measures no, that we are currently implementing, we need to observe no, yun pong ating... Uh, Uh, commitment na hindi po tayo maglilisaw-lisaw or pupunta kung saan-saan or magmo-move from one place to another no because we are trying to prevent the spread of COVID-19 within the campus premises. So kung ano, saan lang po tayo nakaupo, doon lang po tayo mag stay within the duration of the class. All students will be required to sanitize their stations, no yung mga desk ninyo before you You take your seats, sanitize muna po ito using alcohol-based sanitizer, and then ganun din bago kayo umuwi. Okay? All class activities and discussions will be done within the allotted time. So technically, overtime po on the part of the teachers, the professors are prohibited since it may affect the prescribed number of hours per day. Ito po ay para sa mga face-to-face -face classes po. Ano? And then, collaborative activities are discouraged except for laboratory activities. Kasi syempre, for laboratory activities, cooking, sa science laboratories, talagang merong uh, collaboration dyan. But for classroom, uh, hindi muna po natin ini-encourage ang mga professors no, to do yung group activities kung saan magaharap-harap yung mga studyante natin. Hindi muna po hanggat hindi pa totally maayos yung situation no, ng uh, COVID-19. Next, hand disinfection will be carried out every 30 minutes. So, professors and uh, students would uh, should actually carry out itong uh, hand disinfection na to using alcohol-based sanitizers or alcohol-based uh, uh, material. No? Now, yung atin pong cafeteria, the canteen, will be open for purchases only. So, technically... Uh, bibili lang kayo sa loob ng cafeteria pero sa labas po kayo kakain. Okay? Hindi po sa loob ng canteen. If you have your face-to-face -face classes at regular classroom yung ginagamit ninyo for the face-to-face -face class, dun po tayo babalik to eat our snacks. Okay? Ang uh, oras po ng pagkain ay hindi po sana lalagpas ng 15 minutes. Okay? So kung halimbawa ang break time ninyo ay 30 minutes or 1 hour, Pilitin po natin kumain sa loob lang ng labing limang minuto and then isuot na natin ulit yung ating mga mask. Hand disinfection will be carried out, always remember that, before and after eating. Okay? All students are required to sanitize their study area before going home. So, kayo po, pag bago kayo umupo doon sa desk ninyo, isasanitize niyo ang inyong desk. Pag alis ninyo, isasanitize niyo rin po yung inyong desk ulit. Okay? Students and parents are not allowed to stay within the campus premises after the class schedule. So after po ng klase ninyo, uuwi na po tayo. Okay? Bystanders are not allowed within the university premises. No, as much as possible, kinokontrol natin yung number ng tao sa campus. No, kapag tapos na po ang klase ninyo, uuwi na po tayo. Okay? Next. All students are strictly discouraged to go to overly crowded places after classes. I understand that the economy is already open and uh, it means risk for everyone. So technically, uh, open ang mga malls, open ang mga restaurants. But still, since you are having your face-to-face -face classes or you will be having your face-to-face -face classes, especially for nursing, medtech, grad tech students, no, yung mga may laboratory dyan, We would still advise and recommend na wag na muna kayong magmamasyal uh, no after classes kasi in the event na magkaroon kayo ng symptoms or magkaroon kayo ng ubo ng sipon no, you will not be allowed to enter the campus premises na kinabukasan kung may kung meron kayong pasok no and uh, 
ma- malalagay sa risk ang uh, mga classmates natin, ang mga professors natin. No, we have to protect ourselves, no? We have to exert our best efforts in protecting ourselves for us to be able to protect other persons, other individuals. Next, the library will be open. I understand that uh, Dr. Haas made mention a while ago that we have online resources available at the student's disposal. Now, you can actually use those, those online materials. But if you happen to need certain books na printed at sa library lang talaga available, you can, you can now visit the library. No? However, ang atin pong library services will only be limited for borrowing and returning of books. So hindi po tayo na pwedeng magstay sa library to do research works. You can only borrow books and then you can return the books no physically. Yun lang po yung transactions na available sa library as of this moment. Now, disinfection protocols will be implemented immediately after every class. So technically, after ng inyong klase, pwede na po kayong uuwi. Kami naman, dito sa university, we will be disinfecting the rooms that you have utilized. Especially for those rooms na na-identify na may mga studyanting nag-positive or studyanting uh, uh, symptomatic, ganyan. Next, if the professor or the student will be tested positive or will be exposed to a confirmed case, provisions of the contingency plan will be activated. Thus, online modalities for exposed individuals may be implored. So technically, hindi muna siya papasok no, sa online muna po tayo. No, you may need to coordinate with your respective professors about the recorded uh, sessions, no, yung mga asynchronous modalities ninyong available. Parents and fetchers, no, may mga college students kasing sinusundo pa. You can actually utilize the parking space no, at the Engineer Kaluwag parking area and the Venerable Mother Consuelo parking spaces. Yan po yung mga open spaces natin intended for guests and students. Students with any symptoms, ito po ang bagong abiso ng Health Services Unit. No? Para po sa mga estudyante na may face-to-face classes, may mga laboratory work, no? kapag ka daw po kayo ay symptomatic from any origin, no? wag na muna pong pumasok. Kasama po dyan yung mga gynecological causes. Halimbawa, nagdidisminoria kayo, magkakaroon kayo, at uh, sumasakit ang puson. Pag nararamdaman na po natin yan, wag na muna po tayong pumasok no, uh, sa face-to-face class natin. Now, students who exhibited any symptoms while inside the classroom will, re- will be referred to the HSU, no, to the Health Services Unit, and shall be placed under isolation. After evaluation, tayo po ay kailangan na pong umuwi. No? So technically, uh, kung kayo po ay in-expect ninyo na kayo po ay magkakaroon na at usually kapag kayo ay nagkaroon, sumasakit ang inyong puso, no? hindi nyo talaga kinakaya yung dysmenorrhea attack ninyo. So, as much as possible, kung ganito po yung situation, wag na muna po tayong pumasok. Okay? Kasi hindi po tayo po pwedeng magstay ng matagal sa clinic ngayon. No? Ang uh, provisions natin for the clinic is for assessment and then after that, for referral na po tayo. It's either sa nearest hospital or pauwiin po tayo sa ating mga tahanan. Next, ito po yung mga kailangan yung dalhin lagi. Every time na po kayo ay pupunta sa university. Well, technically, kahit po saan kayo pumunta, maganda po lagi po kayong may dalang ganito. So una, alcohol-based sanitizer, yung nasa sprayer po, no? kasi you need to disinfect your workstations. And then, of course, you need to bring your own liquid hand soap. So bakit po namin laging sinasabi na magdala ng liquid hand soap? Pangangailangan po natin yan, no? Uh, as part of our requirement sa Adulting 101, maganda, meron po talaga tayong dalang liquid hand soap. No? Kahit po hindi pandemic, importante po ang liquid hand soap at saka po ang wipes. Kahit po tayo ay mga lalaki, kahit na uh, kayo po ay mga bruskuhin, kailangan po may dala kayong wipes and tissue. No? Hindi lang po ang mga babae ang nangangailangan niyan. Next, kailangan din pong magdala ng extra mask and of course, reusable water bottle. As much as possible, uh, para po sigurado tayo no, 
ang gamitin po natin ay yung mga sarili nating water bottles. No? Kapag ka po kukuha ng tubig, magpa-purchase ng tubig, sarili po nating water bottles ang dadalhin. No? Iwasan na po natin bumili ng mga plastic bottles for environmental purposes. So as much as possible, sundin po natin itong mga provisions na to. And uh, if you have questions and other related concerns or if you are symptomatic or if you are having issues pertaining to COVID-19 and the like, no, you may contact uh, the Crisis Management Committee at 0920-510-0059 no? or you may call 044-931-8600. So muli po, maraming maraming salamat. Stay safe, everyone, uh, and uh, welcome to so Thank you, po, Sir Ezek, for informing the students regarding the things we need to know for our face-to-face -face classes. I am sure na excited ng ating student sa kanilang F2F classes. And to tackle more about health and safety protocols in the new normal, let us welcome the coordinator of health service, Ms. Joy Ann Carlos. Miss Kiana, bali iyon na po yun, no? Yun na oh. po yung uh, kabuuan po ng presentation namin oh. from the Health Services Unit and the Crisis Management Committee. Thank so you. It is, thank you po. So it is now the end na pala ng ating orientation. So thank you for all the information and lessons that were shared by our lovely and honorable speakers. So let us now use those learnings to make our new academic year fruitful and memorable. Also, I humbly ask you to answer the evaluation sheet in the comment section regarding our orientation for today. So once again, I am your host, Kiana Soto, and thank you for being with us today. Stay safe po. Maraming salamat. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was born for you and me. He came to bring the good news from sin to set us free. The blind, the deaf, the lame, the poor, His power meant to see. He gave His life upon the cross, eternal life the Shed one before his agony We share the body and the blood In his memory To make his message known Is our responsibility So here we are to pledge our lives To the Lord of eternity I am Catholic I am alive I am the gospel To the Lord.